I should say. Uh, woke up about 11.30, realized I couldn't move. Kind of just lounged around for a bit and said, okay, let's get going. Made dinner for tonight, put it in, I put it in the crock pot. Realized that wasn't going well, so I needed to fix some other things there. Finally go out. I'm like, okay, I'm going to grab my coffee and come home. It's going to be great. And the coffee place I go to that's right next door fucking sucks still. It's dog shit. How do they fuck up coffee? It's not exactly a complicated thing, and I pay more than I do if I go to fucking Starbucks. But it's cold, and I didn't want to go too far today. Truly, my life is miserable. <laughs> I am the oppressed class. Speaking about the oppressed class, we're talking about mechs today. Mecha. mecha -roonies. I like mechs. Uh, mechs are a... Mechs are a thing no pat enjoys. For a variety of reasons. But, generally speaking, I like to, as I do with most things in life, I like to break things down a little bit. Give people all in the right headspace. Generally speaking, mechs, or I, I should say, when I refer to mechs or mecha, I'm kind of referring to the same thing when it comes to just speaking wise i might call something a mech i might call something a mecha i'm referring to that as the same thing to me if you want to get if i'm trying to break them down to be different from one another generally speaking i use the term western mech slash mecha and eastern mech generally speaking a western mech is a tank with legs uh, let me, uh, I'm trying to think of a really solid example of this at the top of my head. I had everything, like, written out really nice. Uh, actually, no, um... Yeah, you, you kind of see, this is generally when people say, like, oh, well, we, I want a, like, dirty industrial mech. Like, if I do, like, an industrial mech. This is kind of what I am referring to as a western mech. These things are clearly big, they're stompy, they are designed for manual labor, they're designed for moving around things. You kind of sub out some of that humanoid humanoidness, as well as a lot of agility, though. But usually these things are very well armored. Uh, you, take, you, you don't fight these things with small arms fire, you fight these things with anti-tank weapons. And that's what that's their kind of their role on the battlefield is anti tank. You know, it's like, hey, we are an armored unit. Eastern mechs, though, tend to be uh, agile, mm, agile but human. Probably one of the you know quintessential ones is a Gundam. Oh, you know, or, or a classic mobile suit. Is I I kind of refer to these as like the quint the quintessential you know Eastern mech is. With a Gundam, with a, with a, well, actually not, not with a Gundam, technically with a Gundam, but with a mobile suit, you can lift your arms up, you can push something away, you can, you can squat down, you can move a lot differently, and there's usually a lot more agility when it comes to it. Eastern mechs are all about that, to me anyway, that's what I kind of see in my head anyway. Western mechs don't move, Eastern mechs move, they dart around the field pretty well. Now, when I refer to things as like a Western versus Eastern, this isn't strictly, oh, only only Japan produces these kinds of mechs. Only the West produces these kinds of mechs. No, there's a lot of crossover. It's just the way that you see a lot more often than anything. Uh, generally speaking, from there, we can usually break things down into uh, real robot, super robot, depressed robot. Uh... <laughs> Real robot is, like, we are in a literal, like, this is a war machine. Uh, if I, you, let's just type in real robot. I'll just do real robot. No, no, not that. Real robot mech. Generally speaking, these are a lot more utilitarian. They are usually in a weird point. Uh, some people have described things like pat labor. You know, people have described things like pat labor to be real robot. Generally speaking, because, hey, guess what? There's our people piloting, and there are problems with the mech, and they break down, and they are, generally speaking, a mech that is in the world a little bit more. 
Contrasting that is Super Robot. Super Robot is effectively a superhero, except you're a giant fucking robot. Anytime you see something like a Super Sentai or anything of like Mazinger or anything like that, you're actually referring to Super Robots. Voltron, we see, we see Voltron up here. Generally speaking, again, these are superheroes. Mm. You know, these are superhero mechs at the end of the day. And they do superheroic things. And then I call these Evangelions. Uh, this is a weird trope that we've seen quite a bit every now and again of uh, Evangelions, otherwise known as depressed robots. Usually, the robots operate off of something... Usually something heinous or something very strange and be like, oh, it's eating your soul. Or, oh my god, it requires... It's powered by your dead mother and you must enter her womb again. No, like, again, depressed robot. That's not a real genre. Right? If you find it, you're not going to find it. But there's enough explanations for it. Depressed robot. Big fucking robo depressed robot with Shinji inside. Like, the thing is, it's just like, it's not even just like one show. Like, there are a few shows that are just like, oh, what is this? It's depressed robot. And get, in, get inside the depressed robot protagonist, Kuhn. So those are the very, very basic, very basic explanation of Max. There's a lot more you know, explanation that we can go into. We can, we can talk about natures of characters and things. But generally speaking, when it comes to a TTRPG, TTRPG mecha games, generally speaking, we find a few different schools of thought. Now, the first school of thought is fairly simple. Well, we're, going, we're just going to call this the Evangelion school of thought. Character good, robot bad. Not necessarily like this, but bear with me. The idea of like an a, the Evangelion school of thought is the characters are what matter. The mech doesn't really matter at the end of the day. The mech is a vehicle to tell the character's story, literally and metaphorically. We are getting inside of the giant robot because we want to make our characters feel vulnerable but powerful. We want our characters to enter the robot to make sure that they understand that being in the robot is awesome and also sucks. There are quite a few different Evangelion inspired games. Uh, let me uh, let me let me bring up that was um, fuck I forgot its goddamn name. Probably the uh, the one that I re I did a video on it and I completely forgot. I had all my notes perfectly perfectly fixed up by the way. Every single one of my notes I had ready, and then I forgot every single one of them. Uh, the microsecond I entered, uh, Tears of the Machine, that's it. Like, you end up with, like, Tears of the Machine, which is legitimately just Evangelion in all but name. Now, let's even, let's just do Evangelion TTRPG. Then you have, like, the more overt ones, where it is, hey, it's Neon Genesis Evangelion, but it's, uh, it's our game, kind of thing. Then you get games like this, who are clearly inspired by, you can find a lot of games being like, I was inspired by Neon Genesis Evangelion. You're gonna, you're gonna like it, because... That's, we're all depressed, and a a Ava, because Ava's the cool art, you know, cool thing. And then, of course, we have Adeptus Evangelion, obviously. But yeah, there's quite a few different uh, Ava games. But that kind of moves us on to our second one, which is uh, Armored Core. Character bad, robot good. Uh, very simply put, hey, fuck the pilot. We don't need the pilot. The pilot is an irrelevant factor to facilitate us getting in the robot and bla I don't even know what the fuck is going on there in that image. I, I'm, I have OBS open to make sure everything looks correct. And I see that image. I see what you're all looking at there. And I'm going to quickly, you know, click here and... No. I'm not old. I'm, I'm, I don't, I don't want to be here anymore. Generally speaking, Armored Core games are, we don't need a character. 
The character is completely irrelevant to the actual... Oh, we got a manly co-host. <laughs> Welcome to Charanzible. Like, uh, there's an art-making kitchen sink sign. Lights are just finger paints. Gundam mech... And then, you know, battle tech, the exact off you know, the second you climb into a battle mech, you feel like a god of war. So, again, armored core, character bad, robot good. That's all you need. Simple. And, honest to God, I would actually say, I would say this. Lancer follows this school of thought. Lancer, for those who don't know, is a is a tabletop role playing game by Tom Bloom, former formerly Tom Parkinson Morgan, uh, because he took his wife's last name. And uh, technically, it's not by him; it's by a guy named Miguel, Miguel Rivera. He just did the artwork, even though he's not really doing the artwork anymore. Uh, it's kind of weird in that regard. But Lancer follows this school of thought. To Lancer, this is important. To Lancer, your character is completely irrelevant. You could do whatever, you can play a fucking dog in that robot, and it does not matter. Because there's no actual pilot interaction with the actual ro with your giant mecha. There is no pilot interaction. And there is no way to do that. More extreme cases, you get things like uh, Chrome Strike, for example. I'd say Lancer is one of the more extreme cases of how that could be kind of bad. Then you get games like Chrome Strike, which is getting an update soon, right? Right, Duke? Uh, you get games like Chrome Strike, which does have the idea that the character is important, but it's very much not the focus of the game. Getting in the robot and fighting people is the primary driving force of of this. That's it. This is just purely from a design perspective, not like a setting perspective or anything. Then you get the Titanfall school of thought, which is kind of like both good, both good, but lacking. You know, it's kind of the idea of like, we aren't going to go really in depth into any single mech. We're not going to go in depth into any single character. You're working together. Uh, Chris Perrin's mecha does follow this kind of logic here quite a bit, actually, because it says, hey, your pilot is just as important as your mech, but, this is a big but, it's your pilot and your mech, and you don't get that much to play with between, between them, but it doesn't really matter. Generally speaking, it's, again, it's, we're trying to give, you know, we're trying to integrate the two. A good pilot will make a good, will make any mech good. A good mech will make any pilot good. A good pilot and a good mech are a god of fucking war. Uh, and then you get the battle tech. You know, battle tech is mentioned. Battle tech, which is uh, kind of like 75% robot, 25% character. But there's a very important thing to note with battle tech. Battle tech is also a game about dying. This is very important to note. Battle tech is a game about death. What do, you, what do you mean, Note Pan? What I mean is, the second you enter that battle mech, the second you are in that machine, you are saying, I am ready to die. And anyone who's played Battletech before can attest, hey, look at my awesome, cool pilot. Hey, he got crit and his ammo exploded, and I'm dead now. It's very, that can happen. It could, it is very easy for you to die in battle mech, in battle tech. But it's very easy for them to die as well. A good pilot is a pilot that survives. And it really does depend. Hey, you can be the best pilot in the fucking world, but if you're in an Irby, the guy, the, the shitter in an Atlas is gonna, is gonna probably, yeah, is probably gonna fuck your day up a little bit. But not saying that Irby can't fuck up that Atlas with a good, you know, with a good, you know, becoming a missile boat, point, point blank missile boat. Nothing saying that is impossible. And I would rather have a few Irbys on my team than an Atlas in an urban setting if I want to keep the urban setting around. That's kind of the idea, though, with Battletech is the second you are in that field, it's a lot more we have to survive. Like, this is a this is a grind to live, we're going to fight, and we're going to try to keep people alive, we're trying to keep people moving. It's just as much as offense as it is defense. Now, 
these are very simple, very broad categories of higher thinking. One last one I want to mention is Gundam. Now, a Gundam one... Yeah, a single AC-20 can equalize Ermi Atlas matchup. Exactly. We can, we, we can do this. Now, Gundam's a little bit different. You can kind of say Gundam, a, a gun, uh, the school of Gundam Thon, is the exact opposite. It's 75% character, 25% robot. You are a super hyper accomplished pilot. You can turn any mech into a fucking killing machine. But if that motherfucker has the experimental death machine made, a, made of liquid unobtainium, and he is now being powered by magic doom crystals... It doesn't matter, your GM is going to lose. <laughs> we can believe with all the heart and soul, but we're going to lose. <laughs> but we can sure as hell make sure that he doesn't get there. And we've seen that time and time again, you know, with various matchups. And, you know, uh, most notably Amuro, because Amuro wasn't a soldier to begin with. But Amuro eventually became a hero of the Federation. Generally speaking, Gundam schools of thought are all about the character and how they pilot a robot. Usually, though, there's not much customization in that. That's kind of one of the ideas. If we do kind of like the sliding scale of customization, it is the most ultimately customizable one is the armored core. Because that's what 95% of the game is about. It does not actually believe, it does not actually matter what the fuck it is. I want to custom design every part, every arm, every leg, the thickness of my armor plating, and my cock holder. I want every single one to be perfect. Because it's mine. My death mech. Then usually it goes to kind of like the battle tech, titan fall. Uh, Evangelion, and then Gun the Gundam games that you like focus a lot more on character tend to actually not have as much customization because again, it's hey, you're piloting a good mech. Doesn't matter how you know it's your character that really matters. Evangelion games kind of can go either way. Kind of depends on the character. Kind of depends on the game really of like how you know how in depth you want to go for it. I've seen it a little bit more custom, but. Usually these are also very strong narrative games. So, with that very uh, long-winded explanation out of the way, the uh, games we're going over today, uh, pain, suffering, if you will, agony, possibly. So, give me one second, let me uh, open up. So, the first game we're going to be going, we're going over to only two games today, because I got sent these games, and I want to go over it, and now I want to, I want to talk about them. Talking about things are fun. The first game we're going to be going over today is going to be a game called Steel Hearts. I said Steel Hearts. Open the fucking book. Is Steel Hearts. Mobile engage engagement chassis, Steel Hearts. Strong presentation. We're going to realize this is a lie. Uh, mostly because uh, I'm, we're going to need to open up multiple fucking things for that. Uh, and just to just to give you an idea of what I of how this is a little bit painful. The next one we're going to be going over is probably the uh, the main the main thing you're here for. Let's be honest with ourselves. I wanted to have a two case. Welcome to Salvage Union. Now, yeah, Salvage Union is a unique entity, uh, and I'm going to tell you something very easy. This is the entire game. Right here. This is the entire, entire game that you really need to know about. And you might be thinking, oh, there has to be more. No, there isn't. If you have this, if you have this page, you can play the entire game. All right, cool. I just want to make sure that we're on the same page in that regard. So, the first thing we're going to be playing, so the first thing we're going to be going over anyway, Steel Hearts. Why do I want to go over Steel Hearts first? Well, as you can kind of see, this is 83 pages. This is lying to you as well. Uh, because uh, 83 pages is... Uh... 
fascinating game. Let's just say, let's just say that. It's a fascinating game. So, obviously, I think we need some help. I think we need someone to help us out with this. And uh, let, let me let me see if I can find my correct, my correct man. Yes, okay. So, give me one second. I need to do some, do some work, do some behind the scenes work. Loathe some mecha slop. PNG to PDF. I forgot to convert these. I knew I forgot to do something last night. I fucking knew it. I absolutely knew. I I forgot something, but I want to introduce you all to uh my my cool my cool ki my cool guy. Cuz I feel that this is very important to make sure that people understand who my cool character is. Because some people might be a little bit, you know, perturbed by my cool character, who is uh, very unique. So, this is uh, this is Mez this is Jean Luc. Uh, as you can see, the Jean Luc is going to be uh, showing us how to how to play the game. Uh, of course, we also are going to be piloting our only the only mech we need. Uh, well, say hello to the Measure Head. Yes, the uh, the measure head, and uh, our pilot John Luke. So <laughs> let's uh, how do we start this? Let's uh, let's let's start this as best we can. That's it. Put that right there. What is Steel Hearts? Let's uh, let, let let's let's start from the top. What are we actually working with here? Steel Hearts. If we go to Steel Hearts. TTRPG. It is by this guy named Sandro AD. Right here, you see, years 99 of the you know the new century. Welcome to Steel Hearts. Version 0. I want you to remember this thing right here in every single instance of what we're talking about. This is not version 1, this is not version 2, this is version 0. You can pick up the game for free right now. It's right here. You can pick it up for free. Technically, it's 1.4 has been on the horizon for a while. Uh, there's a bunch of these updates, and they're like, oh boy, the terrain rules. Difficulty advice. They've been going really hard to make sure that this is going to be very big and popular. Has this guy done anything else, really? Not really. Uh, I got hit by a meteor. Looks like some people downloaded it. Yeah, you, you can buy it if you want. It's a it's a it's an isekai game. Burnout Reaper. You can pay two hundred fifty dollars for, or, or get get that. He doesn't even have a card anymore. Uh, this is actually, you know, real real robot fishing, even mech pilots. This is actually part of Steel Hearts. Because the big thing is, if we go to Steel Hearts, this is the actual full website for this game, by the way. It has a full website, you know, it has a big FAQ, frequently, various frequently asked questions, we've got a mech catalog. This is actually very detailed, and this looks very nice. But there's a part of me that's wondering... Huh. Yeah, this is Sandra. Sandra may cry. Have I been blocked by this person? Un luckily, I have not. Narrative designer and mecha fan. The Western Massachusetts. His novel. Yeah, this is, uh... This shit ain't cheap. <laughs> let's, let's just say that this has been a thing that he's been working on for a while. Now, this has been out there for quite a while at this point. And, uh, yeah, June 6, 2023. Uh, yeah, this this game out out at this point, it says Steel Hearts is now live. It's version zero has been live for six, for a little over six months. Version zero. Uh, could I have, could I found anything too exciting on this? 
No, he seems to be a pretty regular person. Most likely, if I look deeper in, you'll probably reveal that he secretly, you know, wants to kill kids or something. Who fucking knows? Uh, nothing too overt there. Didn't find anything, you know, controversial about the entire experience. But just, yeah, we're dealing with a... This is a guy who is definitely aiming for a spot. Let's just say that. He wants a... He, he is aiming for the stars, and he is going to make this thing very big and very exciting. And this is going to be his big... I'm everyone and little fucking Gundam SDs. Uh, interestingly enough, there is stuff here. Like, you could download the game, except it's just this. This is, this is just what he links you to. This is really all you need to know. And it says, like, oh, wow, look at all this. Look at all these things here. Oh, wow, look at all these things. We're going to talk about something called UI. We're talking about a user interface. Why user interface is very important. Uh, <laughs> see, I even claimed this a while ago because I'm like, oh, this looks really nice. Kinetic. Yeah. So, again, nothing too exciting about Sandro. Nothing that I know. If we look at a Sandro dev card, you see this is who he is. Uh, let's see. He's got a YouTube, he's got a blog spot. Uh, he hasn't put out videos for. Uh, Put out five five months ago. He put out a video. Uh, <laughs> been a while. Uh, this is his blog. You like a blog? Ta da! You 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 can tell the. Uh, I didn't realize that. Uh, regard, I ignoring the 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 usual suspects. Let's get to the to the slot. Let's get to the to the game. Mm. Give me one second. Uh. Oh, God. Someone's gooning in general. Why are people gooning in general? Give me one. G give give me give me. Oh my god! I don't have a gooner. Oh. No goo No gooning in writing words. No gooning in writing words for speaking. Jesus. It's Gorbin. There we go. Yes, he's been gorbed. Like, no gooning, no gooning in writing words, please. Please. But yes, let's get back to, uh... And the thing is, he does actually have a really nice bit of artwork here. This has a very thematic piece here. Uh, also, do you see all of these things where it's all very anime and shit? This betrays the actual game. Uh, a hundred years have passed since mankind delved to the moon in hopes of saving our dying Earth. They found an infinite energy in the form of crystals that had been abandoned by a long-dead alien empire. But crystals weren't the only thing left behind. In the year 0000, the Earth's moon cracked open. And Kaiju showed up. It's, it's Kaiju. Uh, it's been 99 years since the moon exploded. And we, we live in bastions now, guarded by giant mechs. But don't worry, we must pilot a mech, but hey, to pilot a mech is to be all at once invincible and expendable, because get it, we are also Evangelion now. Because you resonate with barrel crystals, 
these the ma you resonate with magic crystals using your heart um yeah no yeah it's it's evangelion but also it's it's trying to be gundam it is, it is gundam by way of evangelion with all of the right wrong problems that go on there but yeah this is the thing. Steelheart Zero is a work in progress. It's kind of a minimum viable Steelheart. Minimum vi this is this is at its best a minimum viable product. I want you to all remember that. Uh Yeah, Kinet Realms. I was thinking, hey, what happens in a Pacific Rim scenario when the kaiju are finally in check and the world start turning the guns back on itself? Uh Yeah, this game has been in development for effectively, at this point, four years. Uh, yeah, that's the thing. It's like, it's effectively four years to get here. And he's just like, oh, well, Codify, that can completely hand up. Generally speaking, this is, um, how do I want to word that? This is someone's autism pro. Yeah, it's, it's a little, it's, it's Pacific Rim. I think that's the best way to think about it. It's Pacific Rim. But it's not Pacific Rim. That's the weird thing. It, it wants to be Pacific Rim, but it also wants to be Evangelion a little bit. And you could say that Pacific Rim wants to be Evangelion for all the right wrong reasons, but generally speaking, that's kind of the idea. Now, if we remember... Now, if we remember very distinctly... Well, who's... If we... Yeah... If we remember very distinctly, Evangelion games focus a lot more on characters. Well, obviously. This is incorrect in this one. Yeah, it's Zone of Enders with her. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're gonna we're gonna talk about that handy dandy list I made. This is actually kind of like a weird Gundam game. That's why I say it's like it's a Gundam game as well. Steel Hearts is the labor of love I do in my free time. And all of the art was funded out of pocket. A whole standalone expansion that focuses on non-pilots trying to make a living, Steel Hearts Black, even has its character sheets completed. For some reason, this, this is, how do I want to word this? This is a labor of love. This is also a horrific autism baby project. And I am... Keep an eye on it. We'll, we'll, as we're going through it, you'll understand what I mean by it is a baby project. But Jesus. <laughs> so, yeah. To give you an idea of the uh, number of people he would have to... He's commissioned, mind you, for this. This isn't cheap. This is this is not cheap, as you can kind of see here. Like, there are, there are people he has paid quite a few... You know, quite a bit of money here. Yeah, which also is Harmony Drives. Harmony Drive was uh that was the eight, that was not the uh that was a common rider game that never came out. Uh and then Armor S tier Armor S tier is another game that I want that I've been thinking about going over, but I just never really do. Yeah, so this is one of those just weird things like, oh, okay, what's he inspired by? Tamino, Anno, Imashi, Tanu Yoko, Magawa. Pondsmith? Yes, Mike Pondsmith gets mentioned in this game. Uh, Makapatang, we'll, we'll understand he does like uh, Maharlika. Maharlika is a game that is trying to be Lancer. Because unfortunately, Steelheart is trying to be Lancer again. Because all indie mech games are secretly just Lancer in disguise. There's a special painting, too. Yeah, so... To give you an idea... This is... He literally has someone to give a forward... Japanese to English translator who helped... Localize... It's like, I gotta, I gotta check some. Christina Rose... It's the one that got, uh... 
Yeah. Localizers. But yeah, just... <laughs> Yep, here we go. Let, let's start. Now, one thing I'm going to say about this game as well is that every single thing is written in setting. Before we get started, I'm just here to give it a tiny sample of your blood. Oh, you're worried about the big this needle is. And I finally learned the game first. Well, my experiments can wait. We'll go over all the basic. Everything is written in character and that annoys the shit out of me. Because here's the concepts and goals. So... Because again, we want to make every single game at once. It's a punchy and high stakes tactical combat. XCOM into the breach. Just Fire Emblem. Not which Fire Emblem? Super Robot Wars. Zone of the Enders. Armored Core. Because all of those are the exact same kind of game. Blades in the Dark. Harmony Drive. Blazing him, Maharlika, Armor Astir, Advent, for narrative storytelling that push character moments. Political intrigue, I mean, caught between complex factions vying for power. Gundam, Zeta, ZZ, Unicorn, Thunderbolt, Wing, Ghost of the Shell, Jinro, Metal Gear Solid is getting mentioned in here. Diverse characters who fight for a common cause. Harlock, Gurren Laga, not Tengintapa, Gurren Laga, I don't even know that's full name. Gundam, Z uh, 79. Promare, Martian's successor, Final Fantasy VI, and Seven, Grappling with the weight of their own actions. Seven will be mine. NGE, because of course, Near Gestalt, Macross. Vast diverse ecosystem, once familiar alien, works to show, show a reverence and love for the beauty of nature. Monster Hunter, Turn A Gundam, Ushashi, Godzilla, Planet of Monsters, Shadow of the Fucking Colossus gets mentioned in there. Giant Robots and Anime Bombast. Get Her Robo, Sakura War, G Gundam, Titanfall, Gun X Sword, Tango, Gunbuster, Bubblegum Christ. Literally every single mech show physically possible will be mentioned here. You know, we're cringe. It's. There is a lot here, and the best way to think about it is, I think there's a lot of, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get into it, yeah, mostly because uh, this is how the entire game looks, it's a little hard to read personally for me, but that's just me, I don't much care for this font. Uh, the garrison manager, three to five players, lots of D6s, gotta make sure we have those exclamation points, because we are secretly 12 year old girls. Uh, generally speaking, 12 per pilot and a full cube of 36 for the GM. Uh, now, this is one thing I want you to remember. You need the mech sheet, a pilot sheet, stratagem sheet. You need three sheets for each, char for each character. Don't forget about the foldable synergy tracker, the foldable threat tracker, square map grids, and basic knowledge of TTRPGs. And it now, I'm going to show you what it means by this here. This is lying to you. This is the kit. This is one sheet. This is one one sheet here. This is all you really need to know. Honest to God, all of this is irrelevant. Now, the mech sheet. <laughs> this is the front of the mech sheet. This is the back of the mech sheet. This is the synergy tracker. This is two parts just two of the of the stratagem sheet which is a completely different sheet which you might need multiple of this is not actually everything i have this is just a very basic explanation of it uh i just want people to realize you need about three maybe four pieces of paper in front of you to play this game as well as the synergy trackers because of course they're foldable and so, content warning. It's the usual bullshit. Time to learn about pilot training. So, what is the... The basic concept of the role is a little weird way of doing this. What you're going to do is you're going to take a number of D6s. 
equal to your skill. And that skill is going to be, is going to generate successes. You roll a two to five, you get one. You roll a six, you get two. But the GM can also put in risk a die. He can put in a risk a die to make your life harder. So let's say. So let's say, for example, I go over to my my sheet here. Let's say Jean Luc needs to make a heart check, an art check. So he's going to take five, and let's say he needs uh, two. He needs two successes. He's got four dice on there. He's going to roll. I've got one, two, three, four successes. I've succeeded with flying colors. But I've got a single problem. So I'm going to take my single risk, and I'm going to roll. I got a two, so I lose one of my successes. I still have three successes, and I pass. That is the most basic understanding of the system and everything you need to know to actually play the game. That's it. Uh, <laughs> is there anything more? No, there is not. That is the most basic concept of everything you need to know. You kind of see here, you know, all, all the all the different things. Generally speaking, they don't actually give you any target numbers to uh, work with. You know, whether or not your pilot can do something. The GM will set a target number of hits you need in order to hit. How many? What's a, what's a good example of what's difficult? What's easy? We don't know, and they don't tell you, really. Uh, generally speaking, I would say about three to four. They kind of say, like, oh. Concrete global TNs on any pilot can attempt. Four to seven. Some, in easy for an expert would be about four to seven. That's quite a bit difference there. Uh, generally speaking, if you roll a dice, you're going to get a success. And if you don't roll the dice, it's like, yeah. So it's kind of one of those things where it's like, all right. Okay, that's kind of strange. Again, UI issue. This is a UI thing. This is a user interface. Because it's like, oh, what's a, what's a very basic, you know, target number? Well, I'm not going to give it to you. This is what I generally lean toward. And it's like, okay. Like, why don't you give me, like, a what's easy, what's hard? It's like... Because the big thing here is the idea of gravity. So, let's say I need to make a mechanics check. I got three dice. Oh, no. This is bad. But let's say I refuse help and I'm going to fix it myself. I can add my man stands alone gravity to that. And I've added that dice to my roll now. Let's say, for example... Let's say for let, let's just say as an example, we are we're 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 I'm gonna try a check. I'm gonna do an art check here, but I want to draw a woman. This is a problem because men of woe equal root of all e root of evil. I would actually take a risk die there because I'm going against one of my gravities. Generally speaking, if you go against these you are going to take a penalty. If you go with them, you're going to get a bonus. Now, do you choose these? Yes, you can just write these in. Hence why uh, John Luke has a racial purity maxer and internalized race theory. Uh, because I could add that, because there's no nothing saying I can't add that. Uh, there's also nothing saying you can't just say, I really hate someone and then fight them all the time and have no... This is write-in. Don't worry. And you know what we love with write-in? We can add anything we want. Therefore, uh, inadvertently, Steel Hearts does fully support racial purity. <laughs> Thanks, John Luke. So. Yeah, add skill of this, add risk of this. And it's a lot of very... Oh, add this, if this, it's very loosey-goosey. I would say, like, maybe we get this a little bit. And then it's like, oh, you want to do, it's a, if it's an assist, you're assisting someone. Add D, you know, any sixes rolled in the assist check, get to add a single hit to their allies roll. Let's make assisting more complicated than it should be. Just add dice. Intensity. Oh, no. You can make it intense. On the other hand, <laughs> ways to up the intensity. 
What does that mean? Rely on the GM to make it go. Now, one thing that synergy is one of those things that is very odd. I, I, I don't know if I like it or not, but I like some ideas behind it. The concept is, hey, during combat, is you're going to generate synergy. Let's say I'm going to roll my, my dice, and I've rolled a 6, 2, 2, 2, 5. I've got, I've got 4 even dice. So that means I can pass synergy around to all of my allies. So since I've got 4, one ally would get 1, one ally would get another, another ally gets 1, and then it would go back to the first ally if there's only 4, if there's only four of us. You cannot benefit from your own synergy. Everyone else can benefit from the synergy you roll. Synergy is incredibly fucking important. You will need to get more synergy. Honestly, you, you might think like, oh, well, it's difficult to fail anything. And the answer is, yeah, it's difficult to fail anything. But during combat, you just want to build up this magic resource, which is going to be building this up. Which, as you can see, is giving you a bunch of different things to do. It's, uh, very important. So, how much money do you have? What's your origin? What's your pilot training? They do kind of throw a lot at you. Uh, what's your gravities? What, what are things you care about? And what are things that you're like, yeah, let's learn about things. What the pilot experience track, the item total, resident. And they have a weird thing about killing. You can overkill. And if you don't overkill, you have the option to either kill or spare the pilot during the attack. But you would always spare another human, right? You don't need to do capital S in that situation. That's that's not quite how that works. Um, uh, Men of woe, root of evil. Uh, generally speaking, uh, when it says, oh, you could spare another human being, there's nothing saying, there's no, like, downside to, uh, impaling someone, ripping out the body, and tearing them in half. Uh, so you can play this as a real mecha game and commit copious amounts of war crimes. Uh, as God intended, because my usual scale of the quality of a mecha game is how much, how easy it is for me is to commit a horrifying crime against humanity in it. And this one, it's very easy to commit a horrifying act against God and humanity, uh, which you shouldn't do. You shouldn't kill people because killing people is bad. On the other hand, is it really my problem? not my fault that they die horrifically it's their fault it's their fault for being in my way so you are supposed to roll on these things yeah it's like no your your age is d3 plus 17 you know plus 17 you will always be 18 to 20 years old normally uh, usually there's a run, young cast in mind. Why can't I play a hot-blooded teenager taking lives of, the, of others? Why? Let me play Let me play a 15-year-old boy with a fucking Hoi 4 heart on and ready to, you know, do that encirclement via fucking lead. It just works as well for a team of adults. <laughs> yeah. You can do whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Your blood type is the first one that actually does matter. Because remember, the Japanese have a blood type thing, so uh, because so we're going to add that in. So technically, uh, blends the best and worst of both worlds between A and B. Uh, yeah. So I ended up uh, having to take a. I ended up with relentless. Uh, technically, I think I I think I got mixed around there. Uh, I took, I ended up with relentless, confident, and a bit irresponsible. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm O, because, uh, of course, uh, Jean-Luc Measurehead is going to be the, uh, most irresponsible man available. Uh, I rolled a six, by the way. Then, we get to origin. This is one of those things when it comes to just UI things. Because I look at this, and I do, there's a lot of instances of, uh, this where it'll be like, this goes with this, 
this goes to a completely different page and it's a little bit confusing to read at some points uh but yeah generally speaking what's your origin none of this matters sorry none of it matters killing people is bad but why is it so fun <laughs> yeah uh you see like oh skill stealth driving street knowledge oh manufacturing oh skills are a feature for steel hearts black if you're playing the base game then these can be ignored oh i have them then oh this is for an expansion pack that isn't out that's the thing you got to remember Steel Heart Black isn't out, and that's the no mech game. It's like, why do you even have it in here then? Why? why? This doesn't do anything. None of the origins do anything. Like, oh, you're a Bastioner. What does this mean? And this is all of this shit. Like, doesn't doesn't matter. How much money do you have? Uh, a little bit. Bastion scary. You have your CSS, CSSN ID because because the world has collapsed. It does not mean we don't have a social security number. Because God bless, you want to take on debts? You can totally take on debts. Oh, oh boy. And it's like, oh, hey, what's I want to do a part time job. What does this mean? You just. Don't do things. This is the part-time job table over here. This, all of this shit is down here. But this is not actually... They're, they're not talking about effects yet. This is the random table to get... To get, um... um to get gravities, if I can fucking speak. Let's use the fatal age calculation. Of course, use the fatal age calculation. So, yeah, that's your gravity. So you start with two effects. Your effects are, you know, alignment system in realms and reliquaries. Do you, do you get it? It's D and D because he keeps mentioning realms and reliquaries because he thinks everyone's a fucking idiot. Like, God damn, Steelhearts, please. And generally speaking, it's not at all like an alignment system, really, in any capacity, because. Again, it doesn't really matter. Uh, they start at four. However, you get four more gravities that start one to three, whatever you feel like. Doesn't matter. Uh, these are what these are supposed to be. I'm like, oh, your your fear of germs. You have a short fuse. A built built a business. You want to be a hero. Change. Be. You want to be an artist. Uh are no means immutable in cases can change over time. Uh, in Steel Hearts Black, you can do something else, but we aren't playing Steel Hearts Black. We are playing this game. Uh, the best way to think about it is anytime you use your gravity positively, you're improving it. It's getting more and more part of your life. If you start going against it, you can actually lower it. And if it goes all the way to zero, you get rid of it and replace it with a new one. Easy enough to kind of understand. Now, obviously, uh, John Luke here uh, does honestly believe all these things. This is his his gravities, uh, including being a racial purity maxer. He's internalized race theory. Uh, he believes that man stands alone and not men of woe, the root of all evil. Uh, and this is also how you get XP is by playing to your gravities. Hey, I want to... Yeah, like, hey, I want to use my racial purity maxing to get experience points. Yeah, this is going to be one of those ones where you as the GM might have to double check things. Because it could be like, I like fighting. I think I should fight more. Cool, you're fighting? I get more things. Hey, GM, I'm doing it. Like, it, you can kind of game the system a little bit. It's not too bad. Uh... Yeah, but you can very easily just just play to your gravities really well, and you're going to get you're just going to increase power pretty significantly. Yeah, the alignment system comes afterwards in the funky metal heart in a throwaway lore bit. Yep. 
An artist so you can play a funny mustache. Credits. Why does it always fucking get more credit? Call it sci-fi coin or something. Anything but fucking credits. Yeah, technically, you can play Adolf Hitler in this game. It is very easy for you to play Adolf Hitler. Uh, you might be saying, wow, that seems kind of weird that I can play Hitler in this game. And it's like, yeah, it, you want to know how you play Hitler? You, you can quite literally custom design 18-year-old Hitler as he gets in the giant fucking robot and power maxes art. You want to... <laughs> Honest to God, playing this game of just notable. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Adolf Kuhn, what are you doing? I can't believe Adolf Kuhn. <laughs> my historical. <laughs> Get in the mech. <laughs> just having a deadly serious game where just <laughs> when you have a guy named Adolf Hitler shows up. Full on actual legitimate character. Can't do anything about it. Yeah, and there's a reason I wanted to play Jean-Luc. This is an actual genre called Vegas, 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 Vegas fantasy. Oh, perfect. But you're you're kind of seeing the. Yeah, you're you're kind of seeing what I mean by this. Like, it's very it's very vague at some points, of like, oh well, we're this, but it's like, oh hey, let's let's roll in the pilot effects table. So what what am I? I'm a, I got a six. Uh, so we are four. So that would go down to four. I'm the purest. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> uh oh, yeah, but you also see Kwaru Nagisa, Optimus. Prime, Leo Stenbuck, Shinji Akari, Shinji Akari, yeah, Frontier Setter, Otacon. <laughs> Otacon, what's going on? They mentioned Lane, I didn't even notice they mentioned Lane. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I feel so fucking depressed. This is one of the first ways you can actually get, uh, like stat points. Uh, also, for some reason, uh, for some unholy reason, they chose to make Amuro fucking Ray the coward and not Shinji. Even though I would say Amuro should go into the sensitive. And Shinji should go into the coward because that's what that's what Shinji is. He's a coward, but that's not something that you but you you like about him. But yeah, Kamina, you want to have Kamina? Yeah, there's a lot here. And again, what you switch it up? To this Mussolini, Goebbels, Stalin, Hitler, all in one party. A super fascist force go. Again, just like a deadly serious game of we we've drawn historical figures to slot apocalypse world mechanics. But yeah, like none of this really matters. Honest to God, you want to have the pilot effects table, you get two point you get four points to spread across anything. Uh spread across anything you feel like. It again, it does not matter. Because it's just like, what is what is being the pro? And like, if we if we look over here, because I rolled the pro, if I find where's the fucking pro? We look here. I found I rolled the the pro and the wired. And the, the wired. Your soul belongs the wiring of technology, your endless sea of the net. Where can be? What can't be replaced with technology? And I'm also the pro. Who the fuck is the pro? Am I blind? Probably, because it's a different fucking font. Yeah, no nonsense, no drama. You always get the job done expertly and stay in your lane. What would make you? A, what would abandon the mission? Yeah, it's. Yeah. Then we have resonant. Res. This resonance chart was really terrible, and I fucking hate this. But uh, the the entire idea is that you have to resonate because we're resonate. We're resonating. Uh, with the mysterious energies of battle. 
not sure what causes resonance nor determines what become of resonance you will learn about what come what resonant is and what betel is in the, the truth book coming out later this year what we do know is that the most resonant can most resonance can only resonate with a single piece of betel one which murasaki would say recognizes them when you start resonating it generates intense heat you boil water <laughs> yep we, we've discovered magic moon crystals, and it converts heat thermal energy to power your mech by boiling water. I want you to remember that everything boils down to boiling water. This year never came. You don't understand, Wuso. You don't understand. If we... This year is whenever the year I decide it to be. Steel Hearts could be coming out in four fucking years. It doesn't matter. What matters is that it's coming out soon because it's my baby game. It's my beautiful baby game that is flawless and perfect and must ne and will never be finished. You know, it can even resonate to any battle they touch. Who we call Mavericks. They don't explain that really. If you're an EDA product, you probably learned resonance through intensive screening as a kid, known as the scry exams. So, if you're a pilot, the resonance by rolling a D6. Non-pilots are welcome to test their luck with their own D6 rolls. So, if you're not a pilot, you roll here, but if you're a pilot, you roll here. This is a really stupid way of looking at this. I this is This is very painful for me to read for, for me to actually read. Uh so I rolled. I got neurosensitive. Your senses are more attuned than most. You can feel every pulse of your battle, every crack of your allies' neurons. What strange power might you be able to unlock? Pilots can converse in emotions telepathically. I want you to know that Jean-Luc has the ability, the very important ability, of telepathically, un, you know, telepathically and emotionally being racist toward you. He literally exudes racism waves. <laughs> Which is very fucking funny to me. Strong aura. <laughs> Again, when people say like, oh man, they're being racist internally, we've internalized race theory and we can and we can make sure that you we can now externalize it. <laughs> like, oh my god, he literally he literally radiates Hitler particles. It's great, it works. Uh so your bond, you start with two bond. And this is your bond to your battle, but also bond to your mech. While resonating, you can spend one bond, just so add three, generate sin. Generally speaking, you get it for sin. Now, now you may be wondering, okay, where do I put my bond? Nowhere in here. You put your bond in here, in this one, uh, <laughs> in this page. Don't look over here. This cannot hurt you. Nothing, the, the measure head cannot hurt you. Uh, a lot of this is just lore stuff, and like, oh no, GMs can learn the nature better when the truth releases! Do, do, do. God, you aren't you buying this? God! <laughs> yeah, um... See, that's the best part about Jean-Luc, himself a minority. He too can just radiate Hitler particles to others around him. M sandwich people do not belong in in my brand in our brand new society. So yeah, one of the things here is like, hey, do you know Vettel's you wanna do the nature of Vettel? Here's don't worry, it's happening soon. It's happening soon. Coming out soon, because, like, there's literally the entire one where it says, like, oh, you're an insomniac. Like, this is a completely different thing you have to roll on. It's useless. If anyone ever, te if everyone ever tells you. 
Um, and they're like, oh, we can make an insomniac. Don't do it. Don't just roll again. It's not as it's not fun. So pilot training. So we get our very basic pilot training. Endurance is our strength. Accuracy is our gun. Uh, presence is. Presence is one of those weird ones because presence is technically perception. I don't know why it's not called perception or empathy or, you know, willpower. It's presence, and it's kind of a weird one. Artistry is... Artistry is another one of those ones that I'm like, what the fuck are you smoking? Playing an instrument, cooking a meal... Bartering, map making, calming a worm, crafting a speech. This is kind of like your talking ability, but it's not your talking ability. It, our artistry feels like a weird one, like we want to have a unique stat for the sake of having a unique stat. And of course, insight and mechanics. Now, the big thing here is you get, you have to randomly roll. It's D3 plus one, plus all your, plus all your bonuses. Uh, as you can see, I rolled dog shit in some respects. Uh, my presence is not very high. My uh, my presence is not very high. I'm not very good at uh, exuding my Hitler particles very well, but we can work on that. Accuracy is kind of mid. I'm very strong, though. Five endurance time is pretty fucking good. Not perfect. The absolute highest you can end up with is four or five. If you really work on it and you get everything perfect, you can probably get up to about six or seven. And that is everything is perfect and everything else sucks. Uh, then it's a bunch of medicals. Doesn't really matter what these are. Uh, increasing. The idea is, you know, once you, you cash in XP to get to increase your stats, it's pretty easy to stat up in this game. You can level up to 10. Uh... And but don't forget, in Steel Hearts Black, you can also increase your things via Cyber Mods or Bio Mods because we added those in, or you can just point by, or you can just, or you can just point by. Don't know why, but you can. But yeah, this is legitimately this entire section. This is all you need to know. Uh, I do like this, and now it's time to talk about Mech Generation Fund. Yeah, you get. Uh, of 150,000 credits, because of course it's credits. Uh, so, time to learn the terms, everyone. Look, with Murasaki Mui. Mui. And hello, hello, Hirschfield. Hello. Uh, general. And we have our very elements damage, because of course we have element damage. Why wouldn't we? Hey, look at all of these abilities here. Look at all of the general skills and all the risk die, skill die, number of D6s we're going to be rolling. Yeah, those are fairly important because uh, this isn't actually... They don't teach you how to actually make a character in this or how to make a mech. Uh, that's incorrect. We need to open up the mechanic shop, the other 79-page book with all of the actual abilities in it. Uh, yeah, so we're just going to keep that open right here. And uh, we don't really need to worry about our pilot anymore. So I'm going to move that over here. So, yeah, here's uh, Korolev Hirschfeld. He's a ham sandwich person. He is a, a ham person. Mui, fuck. Mui, moo, moo. Mui, moo. My name is Korolev. I'm an experimental technologies researcher here at Bastion 6. Have no fear. These are 15 meters tall. These things are fucking big, by the way. Uh, and you fight things. You are seated in a mech cockpit with a giant tactical nuclear armament behind you. Now, generally speaking, this is what the character sheet's going to look like. And I'm going to run through everything you really need to know about this. These are your mech stats. These are the stats that your mech has. Not you, because... Your stats don't really mean all that much inside of the mech. This is what's really going on. That tactical combat system is right here. For this, nothing else matters. We're, this is a tactical combat set game. Of course, we've got our tag and our mecha unit ID. 
Then we got our stats. Now, stats are a little bit weird, but I'm going to do my best to explain them. So, shields. Shields are over health. You can recharge shields. It's a little bit complicated. Soak. Negates damage after your shields. And then you have your armor and integrity. The best way to think about it is I take five damage. I can soak three on my shield, and then my soak is going to eat the rest. Soak is pretty much damage resistance. Your shields can eat damage, your soak can mitigate it. If your armor drops to zero, you're not dead, things are going to start breaking. So, because my armor is 23, I have an integrity of 23. If I take 25 damage, so if I randomly take 20 damage, I'm going to die. And then I'm going to start doing breaks. Effectively, once zero HP, you can get hit three more times before you are completely broken down. Now, there's a bunch of these cargo slots and things. They don't matter right now. But these are your parts. Helmet, core, maneuver, option, arm, arm. These are, these are all different parts you can take. And these are all different things, and they all give you different bonuses. So, Berserk Core. Because I have the Berserk Core here, you get 5 armor, 1 torque, 2 durability. 1 torque, 2 durability. Because I have the Rage Engine, I increase my soak by 1. I have a Rage Charge ability. And I have a stat boost for this phase. Awesome. I, that's something that I can do. I have a I have a bonus for it. This is good. Now, let's say for example, I you know my berserk core gets gets broken. I'm gonna have to roll for an injury because I've been damaged. Uh oh, spaghettios, I'm going to die. Or hey, my my engine my uh, my maneuver has been broken. My my actual rage engine has been broken. Break. I can't move. Hey, my arm is fucked. Hey, I lose both my I lose my axe. Like it's it's Jover. I've lost both things. That is the best way to explain this. And that's really it. <laughs> this may look like a lot. It really isn't. Very simple to un understand. But uh, so torque durability, pretty much pretty easy to understand. Strength. Strength, constitution, dexterity, second dexterity, <laughs> that's the best way to think about it. Pretty much finesse is how well you can manipulate things, mobility is how fast you're moving. Intelligence, wisdom, if you really want to know. Expressing body languaging, resisting strange happening, predicting the weather, scanning samples. You want to be, you want to have a gun mech, you do these three. You want to have a thinky a magic mech, you're going to be doing these pretty easy to understand uh now one thing is you get three parts from the mech shop now as you can kind of see this is how all of the parts actually look so you got your part name you got your what cost is parts cost you get three for free though so you don't have to worry about that you'll always have something now you're going to get things for it a stat boost Acids, actions, basic attacks, stratagems. If you get a stratagem, that's like an ability, effectively. Once per allied phase, different requirements. It could be a bunch of different things. Now, generally speaking, basic attacks, these are the most basic things you're going to be doing. I want to hit you with an attack. You roll skill dice, and you convert every hit to one damage. That's it. So if we go to my mech sheet, you kind of see here my blaze axe has a damage of, I roll six. So what I, what I would do is I would take six d6, one, two, three, four, five, six. I've taken six, and I'm going to roll, and I've generated one, two, three, four, five, six damage, because I rolled a six. I've done six damage to you. Bling! Beat you over the head, and I've done it, does burning damage. Cool, we in, we in. You get two synergy, and that's it. Basic attack, you either roll torque or durability. 
Now, you know, range of three, meaning you hit a single target that must be within three spaces of your mech. You know, what could work with a mech that has six durability? So, you kind of see here, hey, we are moving in here. He's range two. Easy enough to understand. Now, this is probably one of the more complicated parts. Uh, now, what I initially saw here was a horrifying realization of, oh my god, it's Hexhunter Conus again. It's not. It really wants to be, though. So, here's the basic idea. You get 150,000 credits to fuck around with. So, every single thing starts at 1. You can buy any of these nodes. As you can kind of see, you can buy any of these nodes and get a corresponding bonus. So, for example, you go over here. I bought the $10,000 Torque, $10,000 Torque. So, I got plus 2 Torque. However, if you buy both of these, for example, if I bought, you know, plus one torque, plus one durability, I would get the grunt frame. If I got grunt frame, I increase my armor by three. You can buy these in any location, though. You don't need to just go down the, you know, down the, um, down the list or anything. I bought some of these because I'm like, I just think I want these. These seem pretty good. I want to have them, but I didn't need to. So it's like, hey, cool, you know, I've, I've bought this, I've got the grunt frame, and later on I could buy these. Awesome. I can buy some of these, you know, different things to get more bonuses and get better abilities. Everyone is the exact same in this regard. So you can invest, you can invest everything into getting this, and you get, uh, you get uncontainable right off the bat, and you're dirt poor. I kind of spread it around pretty evenly, but you can only have a maximum of 18 of these nodes actually active at any time. And there is the respect option as well. You can kind of see that in the corner there. So what they encourage you to do is anytime you buy one, you mark one off. You know you can't take another. You can't take that. You're, you're trading out one thing for another thing. You see, I said, fuck computing. I don't need any of this bullshit. My entire goal in life is to sprint ahead and beat the shit out of you. I am going purely off of off of numbers, but maybe you want to have that. Maybe that's one to be your thing, but you're you're uh, subbing out somewhere else. Dirt cheap builds are possible. You can be uh, you know, you can be a scumbag with dirt cheap builds and make a little bit of money, and everyone wins. You can also attempt to just power max down one tree in total for torque. Uh, 10, uh, 20, 40, 60, 90, 150,000 to buy all the torque. I'm going to make a wild guess here. Say uh, 10, uh, 20, 40, uh, uh, 20, 40, 60, 90, 150, uh, 10. Yeah, so it looks like it's about 150,000 down at any, any one tree. But yeah, that is effectively how that works. Now, this is where things get a little bit wonky as well, because they try to throw every single piece of information at you at once. Uh, or, I don't know why they this is a UI issue. You don't need to give us all this information. You've already established it elsewhere. What's your armor sum? It's this. What's our speed sum? Base speed plus mobility, total speed. Mech repairs. You need 5,000 credits for a full repair. Because again... You still need to be paid, even though we are uh, in your saviors of humanity, and you're the only ones who are going to be doing it. However, you still we still need to uh, make some money. Yeah. So there's a lot of information here that is kind of just fastball thrown at you. And it's like, all right, we, you know, it's kind of just one of those things like we've like, all right, we've completely understood what's going on now. What's the, what's the, what's the current, uh, current state of affairs. That's really it. Honest to God, it's not complicated making a, a mech. The problem with making a mech is that they just throw a lot of information at you and every single mech is the exact same. Uh, 
because this is this is the shot. This is the mech book. So let's uh let, let's. So we you know, kind of looked at you know intervention time now you know sample stratagem readout manual. Uh, so let's do a let's do a, a very basic one. Let's go all the way down to this is the wizard. Hello, hello wizard. So if I choose a helmet because you get three of these for free, I get plus one to each stat and plus one soak. All right, cool. But let's say I want to have a battle tone. Basic attack, ATU, plus Verd damage. Range, 6. Once per allied phase, apply the word effect. Range, 6. Stratagem, Verd Bolt. It's something that you've bought. Now, do I need to say, oh, well, I'm playing a wizard, so I can do... L I want all of these things. No. You can, technically, say, I want a pointed cap, and I want to play it with a knight. Nothing is stopping you from doing that. Uh, nothing is really... Each of these... Ooh, excuse me. You can kind of think about that each one of these is a pre-built... It's a pre-built mech for you, but if you don't want it, you don't need to do that. You can choose to have a beam. I could have chose to have a beam blade. Nothing really stops me from having a beam blade. Or if I can go all the way down to like the martial to the martial artist. Nothing is stopping me from taking titanium fists. Or conductive nunchucks, and I want to I wanna take that, and I also wanna take the uh the fucking I wanna take my mounting gear, I wanna take this, I wanna take this, I wanna take all these other different things. There's a lot of different options here, but at the end of the day, your mechs are pretty much going to be the same. It's the same idea. It's, uh, you are, everyone's always going to have this exact chart here. Everyone is going to have these six. And all that it matters is that you bring out these six to be exactly the way you want. And they probably won't change either. Unless they are completely destroyed or you find like a legendary part somewhere. When there are legendary parts, because of course there are. You, uh, then you, you do that. So... Weirdly enough, ooh. Uh, weirdly enough, uh, this game is actually secretly a Metabots game. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. I've been lying to you this entire time. This is Steelhearts isn't a mecha game. It's saying, oh, it's 15 meters. No, this is a Metabots game. This is a Metabots game that they have lied to you, claiming that it is, in fact, a mech game. The second you realize that it's a Metabots game, oh, it makes complete fucking sense. And it's <laughs> like, oh, of course, it's the exact same little fucking robot just customized with different fucking parts that you've gotten the gotcha pawn. The entire game makes sense then. Honest to God, if you realize it's a Metabots game. Uh, you can't die in the Metabots version, but hey. Uh, also, here's Ajax Volenrod. He's going to teach us how to do combat. The most important part of the game. Now, the you know, looking for more ground combat rules. Don't. Uh, now, I like the way that they... Um, I like the way that they explain how com why combat is the way that it is. It's, hey, you're going so fast and you, you enter a combat flow that you enter REM time. And the entire idea is you're going so fast, you're seeing everything as a series of actions and turns. That's like, fine, okay, that's a that's a cute way of explaining that away. Uh, however, now we get to the weirdest fucking system in this game that I'm still not, like, entirely wrapping my head around. I'm, like, 95% sure I've got it, but it's very strange the way that they've organized it. So, the basic idea is that you have an action economy, easy enough to understand, and there's two phases of the combat. There is an ally phase and an enemy phase. Cool. So, during allied phase, you get to act. During enemy phase, they get to act. However, this is the thing. You get a number of actions 
for your entire group, the PAA, your Player Action Allowance. The PAA is different for different enemies. Shift over to the enemy phase. So, this is where things start getting a little bit wonky. Uh, you have two action points per allied phase, sort of. But you have... How do I... Okay, here, here's what I'm literally going to do. I'm going to write this out. Because it's a very weird concept. So... During the allied phase, you uh, let's do let's do allied phase one, and we have uh, we have pilot A, pilot B, pilot B, pilot C. They all have two out of two action points. Now during pilot phase one, let's say pilot A does one action, pilot B does a second action. What would occur here is actually in the enemy phase, because you've done two actions. Then we would move over to ally phase two. However, this stays. So, hey, you know, pilot, you know, B goes once, C goes once. Enemy, fa enemy phase kicks in. Then we go into allied phase three. And pilot A and pilot C, we both look at here, would take their action, would take both of their actions, because the PAA is two, for example. This is a very, very basic way of understanding this. Enemy three, and then during allied phase four, everyone here would get all of their points back, would get all of their action points back to redistribute it. This is incredibly fucking weird. I don't know if I like it. I don't know if I hate it. It's a very strange way of doing combat. And the the flow of the fight is very weird. And they don't do a very good job of explaining it. If they were just like, "Hey, you get two action points to, to, you know per you know allied phase. All of you, all of you act at once, but you can use any of your action points whenever you want." Cool. That could that that would be like a lot simpler way. Like I understand what they're trying to do here, but it's just like this is like what the fuck. I don't know if it's just. I'm just not internalizing this correctly, or there's like a, yeah. You take them in any order you want, so technically you can go back and forth and just use them whenever the fuck you feel like. You know, you know, two actions, spend two actions in this allied phase, you won't be able to take a standard action on the next allied phase unless all your allies expended both their actions and everyone's action pool refreshes. This way everyone gets a chance to, even against a fast opponent that comes with a low P PAA. Yeah, because again, it's more like um, it's more like the enemy is setting the tempo of the fight. It's a weird way of saying it, but it is like the enemy is setting the tempo, and I think that is a unique way of doing things. Let me see if I can find. Uh, yeah, here's the here's the Hydra matriarch. This is one of the example care one of the example enemies. Now you see here. She has six PAA. We get to take six actions in in, in any order that we want. Uh, on the other hand, we get to take a six actions in any order that we want because everything is set by the tempo of the of the fight here. Like, hey, Fenrir Colony, Fenrir Colony has a PAA of four. Doesn't really have anything else outside of that. You see, some of these are like. Dread Ooze, Draugr, oh, like, like, okay. Then we get, um, Midas Convoy. The Moving Industrial Biome. What's the PAA on this? Don't, I don't really know what the PAA is. It's like, it's two by default, I believe. Yeah, it's, uh, 
yet they don't really have very good enemies in here to actually explain what the fuck's going on half the time. And it's like, oh, here's this area, and it's like, okay, what's the PAA? It's two, unless otherwise said. I'm like, okay. You know, it's, uh, where was it? Two action points, where was it? Yeah, like, it's a... Generally speaking, like, it's a very strange way of doing things. I'm like, I get it. It's just weird. Yeah, even though I'm like, oh, here's the August. Hey, it's 4 PAA. It's easier to do. But on the other hand, it's incredibly fast and you can fight it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I don't quite know if I like it. I don't quite know if I like it or not. It's a, it's a very weird way of setting tempo of a fight. Uh, so, taking damage. You've taken damage, effectively. So, basic idea. Eat shield. Uh, eat shield. Actually, oh, it's eat soak, eat shield, eat integrity. Think about it as a cascade down. I have taken I've taken five damage. Eat two soak. Eat three shield. I've taken no damage. Technically, you can, if you want to, I believe, you can spend up to your current shields. So you don't need to eat your shields right away. There's no reason to not eat your shields, but in case you, you know, want to. But yeah, so, basic attacks. Ooh. Stratagems. Yeah, then again, basic free actions. You can always do certain actions pretty easy. One of the things is the idea of overheating, and uh, you can also just blow up if you feel like. You can blow up Lal Lamau. Now, you know, when it comes to, you know, overheating, we're running low on synergy because synergy lets us do things. I'm going to take, I'm going to take direct damage. Goes past shields, go past soak, everything. Just deal direct damage. And what do you do? You get sin. You get synergy. We can now use it to do something. Okay, we're going to burn synergy to do something even more impressive. So, if we go over here, hey. Okay. Boost. Burn one sin. Boost one space in any direction. I am being attacked by an attack that is going to eat my fucking face. What are we doing? Boost. 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 Overshield. Oh no. We are... I, I am getting real fucked up and my shield's down. I'm going to go boom, 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 boom. Increase my shield. I need to I need to pump my shield up. Make sure we're we're using sin to heal now. Effectively, that's the best way to think about this. You're spending it to heal your overheld. Oh fuck! I need dice. Amp amp. Oh no! I'm on fire. Boom. Oh no! I want to take a free action. I want to take a free action. You want to take. A Flash action. That's why you kind of see here, this is very important. This is a very important you know, idea of how to play the game and why that they encourage you to print it out. And like part of me is like, wouldn't see the thing for me is wouldn't it make it like a in more interesting if it was like an action point system from like Necronica, for example, and you just are descending in order? And like, hey, that's what it is. That would be a lot more interesting to me personally. But yeah, this is effectively a meta currency. They can they can talk about it. You know, it it is a meta currency that you personally get to do special effects. You need a special thing to unshackle yourself. The maximum you can get twelve actions. You get twelve of this synergy. Any more bad. Any 
any less, eh, that's still pretty bad. You want to get as much, generally speaking, if you want to be a comfortable level and you want to survive many things, 10. 10 to, 10 to 9. Because you're going to be able to amp, you're going to be able to overshield, you're going to be able to boost. Easy enough for you. You want to get out of the line of fire? Awesome. You have, you have toys to play with. Easy. And generally speaking, most actions are going to give you either one or kind of the more dedicated ones are going to give you two or three. You know, for example, making a basic attack gives you two synergy. Two synergy is pretty good. Two synergy is boosting, overshielding, amplifying. And you attack, boost the fuck out of there. But b boosto, boosto gear. Not time to leave. I don't want to die. You are sounding like a TikTok NPC stream soda. Of course I am. Over health, like overcharge of the shield in Brigador? Of course. It's always been Brigador. Also, the gameplay of the thing is based off an ancient Gundam Wing SD tactics flash game. What? <laughs> Let's see. I would not be surprised. Let's play it. Let's play a game, everyone. We're going on an expedition. Let's let's go on a magic quest, everyone. We're gonna find an ancient Gundam Wing SD flash game. Gundam Wing Gundam Wing Assault. I mean, I guess it would be Gundam Wing Assault. Let's. Oh God, this is this is this is some ancient Kino here. This is some, oh god, this is some ancient fucking Kino on the menu here, boys. I am, I am completely unsurprised, though. Guy's getting his ass kicked, though. I'll say that much. Earth is fucking doomed. <laughs> when you hit, when you hit with the opponent, you can click attack several times to destroy their armor easily. Yeah, what's your gameplay show here? It's so good luck. Yeah, that one. Not, I would not be surprised if it's based off a of fucking Gundam Wing Flash game. Not, absolutely no, 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 no problem. But generally speaking, like, I don't, I don't hate it. I don't hate this system. I feel that it's not very, it's not great the way it's explained. Uh, mostly because here's the fucking stack order. Uh, get ready for the stack order autism, because uh, everything, because you have to remember, things can take place during other things. You can do actions, and you can do it as an intervention in some things. So, how it works is, are you overheating, recharging, then you do shielding, then you intervention, then you do the enemy clash, which is different than most things. But you can then boost, which is standard action, enemy charge, amplifying, roll and deal damage, and distribute synergy. All of these things can attack at once and do all everything at once. This is horrifying. And for some fucking reason, Dante and Virgil from Devil May Cry show up. Um, I have no idea why Dante and Virgil from Devil May Cry show up. Uh, one thing to note, though, is that they make a weird implication that 
technically they are in the same mech, so Dante and Virgil are riding together, because that's never gone wrong for anyone involved. Why not call it the Yamato or something? Why don't you say it's Virgil's mech, the Yamato? There we go, easy. But n no, it's a... Uh, this is what I mean by like, this is like two fucking actions, effectively. And it's like, oh goodness, time to time to do that. But now we get to stratagems. I don't like stratagems. Uh, the stratagems are weird. Uh, and what I mean by stratagems are fucking weird. So we're gonna go back to the mechanic shop and we're gonna go to the berserker because I that's what I that's what I'm playing a berserker because I'm a real man. This is the Berserker. So let's say I have got my, uh, where's my, so right here. Stratagem Blazing Whirlwind. You go down to Blazing Whirlwind. I don't actually have Blazing Whirlwind. I have Blazing Whirlwind and Blazing Rend. These are the same stratagem, but different. This is where things get, this is, this is where things get silly. This Blazing Whirlwind, these are like cards. The best way to think about it, these are cards that you would fold. And you would put Blazing Whirlwind next to you. And because you've put Blazing Whirlwind next to you, cool, this is what it is. But I could also say, haha, alternate. I want to now do Blazing Rend. So for each hit, I get to do this. Or, but for Blazing Whirlwind, for each hit I deal one damage and I apply Burning and I gain two Synergy. But if I do Blazing Rend, which is the alternate version of it, I get to do a different thing. Yeah, welcome to, uh... Then technically, like, Rage Charge. I do have Reckless Venting. Because if I go Rage Charge, I can then alternate to Reckless Venting to everyone around me, but if I do, but it's recharge U6 uses, recharge 1 U6 uses 2, recharge 8 uses 2, it's like, uh, it's, it's kind of one of those things, like, these cards look like shit, like, these do not, these do not actually look very good, and they are very hard to read sometimes, let me see if I can find the fucking... Or the fuck is the stratagem cards because yeah because all of these do something different like anytime you use it you're like oh well you can just alternate use you have two stratagems when you actually have one stratagem so right here when it says the like the recharge only with, with maximum number of uses list after uses if you need to recharge you'll need to burn sin equal to recharge one use cost and so effectively recharge one if you burn six and it uses two so it's like oh so if i want to use you know if i want to use blazing whirlwind i can technically use it two times and i have to burn eight synergy to use it again that's the way that's worded Yeah, Virgil the Yamato, Dante and the Rebellion fighting each other over the right that fathers mech the the Sparta. I am subhuman. Yeah, again. That, congratulations, we've done it. Why didn't you do that? It's like, no, here's Camilla. And you're like, who fucking cares? But yeah, and in case you're wondering, yes, every single status effect does have different element damage because why is there element damage i don't quite yeah that was one of those ones i was like oh, okay because you get things like burning is fucking horrifying by the way if they take any action they take five direct damage direct damage goes through everything uh and this includes counters and actions to remove burning you're going, if you get hit by burning, you're going to die. Because you're going to take five damage immediately. If, uh, for example, if the, if the measure head gets lit on fire, 
I have four turns, and I'm going to lose a quarter of my health, no matter what I do. Anything I do, I will eat, it will eat at least a minimum of a quarter of my health. And it's physically, in ag physically agonizing. Hey, per space move. Freezing, just don't move. Acid. Hey, you can't negate damage with soak or shields. Uh, hey, I want to try and negate damage. No, you're not. Hey, I, I'm I'm shocked. Like, shocked is like you gotta build around shocked. Like, oh, honed like a blast of music, a river that cuts the mountain. Finally, honed edge of a pristine blade. You become dazed. This one doesn't like. Okay. Mass is like a stuck a stuck unit cannot be moved. Oh. Yeah, it's one of those things that's like, okay. Like, blaze is, like, burning is fucking nuts. That's, uh, that's my current strategy with this character. The current strategy is light you on fire and then keep hitting you because I'm just going to add more fucking skill dice. And it's like, okay, I'm like, oh, I'm, amused to be, I'm immune to being lit on fire. Damn, that sucks. I'm just going to keep beating you to death, though. <laughs> it's not like I'm not going to be able to kill you faster. Yeah, no, it's like, oh, what do I have to do to remove it? You have to spend strategy, you have to spend synergy. But certain enemies don't have, but enemies don't have synergy. They have tension, which is a different thing. And this is why word is weird. Because word actually doesn't do necessary damage. It does everything. And don't forget, make sure uh, you have the right, you have the stratagem sheet. Because the thing is, this is... This is a single page of stratagems. These are six of them, mind you. These are only six, because remember, these are all together. These are six. At best, at absolute best, you will have about four, maybe five of these. And that is every single part is full. Every single part is there. Because the thing is, there is the other sheet. Let me bring out the other sheet. This is the empty stratagem sheet that you should actually use to track all your stratagems. Yeah. Uh, get, get used to having multiple sheets. And in case you're wondering, no, there's no place to put your fucking stratagems on your actual character sheet. Nope. There, you can't put it anywhere. Because there's no fucking room anywhere. Because they throw so much shit at you. It's like, what the fuck are you doing? Why? Why would you do this? So it's like, yeah, it's... You're looking at maybe... At at best. I want to make a character. I, I, I want to make... You're going to have your character sheet. Your actual pilot sheet. You're going to have the mecha sheet in front of you. That's going to be double-sided. You're going to have the synergy tracker in front of you. And you're going to have a set of stratagem cards by you. Minimum, you're going to have about three pieces of paper in front of you. Up to four pieces of paper. Possibly five. Uh, if you want to have like a, a reference, a little reference thing as well. It's like... Oh. Oh goodness. Uh, running the game. Generally speaking, one of the ideas here is I'll open up the... Uh, bosses and biomes there aren't actually many there is very very few uh actual like abilities to use this is the main enemy that you can fight the hydra matriarch uh, as you can see here they have a lot of vitality they don't have any shields usually because they usually don't uh, six paa these are all abilities that they have hey deal a damage paralyzing strike tail swipe regurgitation field you know feeding they grow and they grow back enemies and guess what if they're a bunch of hydra hatchlings yeah yay it's time to throw a lot more problems at the at, at you yeah mm-hmm Ah, 
So yeah, this is like, you know, Hydra Hatchlings, Hydra Whelps. All of these do different things. But you, make sure you, you know, again, like here are the boss stats. If we go down to the zone gen number with zone generation, when crafting a zone, you can optionally roll D6s and spawn in a certain number of enemies. This is the... This is one of those things that take a little bit to kind of get used to is that they do throw a lot at you. Even just the concept of like, there's chip damage. You don't suffer chip damage. Enemies suffer chip damage though. Oh, you should populate zones. What's a zone? Eh, we're going to sort of tell you. We're also going to sort of not tell you because it's a completely different thing. Because if we go to the Midas Convoy, this is the industrial moving biome, which is a very different thing. Make sure to note all of these, and uh-oh, fucking, if it's a clash attack, they're going to, if I remember correctly, charging means you can't get away, clashing means you can get away from them. That's correct. Yeah, if they're charging, no, that's the other way around. Clashing, that's going to happen automatically. Charging, you can actually boost away uh, to try to keep yourself alive. Because, again, it's um, this is a map game. You're going to be playing it on a map. And here's urban buildings. And you're going to be moving all through that. I have genuinely no fucking clue how this would play on the table. He's apparently played it. I can give him that. But, like, yeah, I would almost say, like, you need to play this on a VTT. Because of the amount of shit. Like, the tension tracker is kind of an alternate. is a optional way of them having synergy. Because normally, they don't have synergy. It's a big thing. They don't have synergy. But this is also a difficulty thing. Being like, oh, well, I want them to have more more difficulty. I want them to be more dangerous. Allowing them to do horrible, horrible things to you very easily. Hey, I want to add dice. I want to fucking kill you faster. Yeah, you can just give enemies that as well. Uh, kind of some very basic deployment creation. Here's, you know, how much are we getting paid? Never enough. <laughs> Scrapping. Hey, you want to scrap things? Here's this. Hey, when you're ripping, you can rip as long as there's one fresh worm corpse. Oh boy, here's a bunch of things. Oh no. <laughs> if you're looking for campaign rules, make sure to buy the next, make sure to get the next book. It's, uh, I'm going to kind of, you know, I'm just kind of zooming through here, but there's a lot of ideas like, oh, here's a bunch of the, Here's how to make a bunch of zones. Here's how to make biomes. Here's how to make units. But they're not really good job of doing it. You know, it's like, oh, hey, what are we actually, what are we actually in, yeah, you know, what, what are we investing in? Uh, it's at a sweet spot, universal tuning enemies, because it'll never come out. This is all the lore shit. Uh, people die, kill them. Yeah, this is a uh, steel heart. Will you survive? Oh my goodness, look. The truth coming out soon because. Yeah, the fucking dragon from the truth coming soon. So, yeah, that's steel hearts. Uh, the thing with steel hearts, and we're going to talk about this as kind of a, as a broader idea, is the UI issue at the end of the day. I want to make a check. What do I have to do? I open up my character sheet. One of my four, one of my three pages in front of me. I take X and I take Y. Cool. That's all I need to do. But I want to, I want to check something on my mech sheet. Boom. Boom. Done. Easy. I want to upgrade my mech sheet. Well, you got to go over here and this is, you got to make sure you know all the numbers here are correct. And you got to plug in all the numbers down here. Make sure you got all of these correct. Make sure you got all of this correct. It's... In an effort, I think, to be more friendly, they've removed a lot of information. In an effort, uh, how do I want? It? In an effort to be, in an effort to be easier, they have made things caught more ha harder. Because you can even see, like, this is all of the information. Like, this is the mechanic shop. You need the mechanic shop to build a mech. Even you need to, you know, you have the, you know, all the reminder text and everything. Then you have the mech sheet, which is technically two sheets. You have, you know, got to memorize all of this shit. At least know where the hell things are. 
and then you have to do all the rules, and there's a lot of little rules, and a lot of little explanations. It's not a complicated game by any metric. I would say that it is a game with a lot of stuff going on. Uh, and will it ever fi get finished? I don't know. It's version zero. Will there be a version one? Maybe. Will there now? Who fucking knows? I don't. Maybe he burnt all the money on fucking, you know, commissioning artwork of his waifu. Who knows? Because the thing is, if you noticed, uh, all of these characters here don't really matter. Your character really doesn't. <laughs> Your character does not matter pretty much at all, except if you want to do the, oh, well, we're doing it. We're doing off, uh, off camera. We're doing the non non con we're not doing we're doing the non combat section make sure you roll artistry it's like 95% of your game is built around beating the shit out of monsters let me beat the shit out of monsters and not have like a fucking being like oh no i feel so bad about killing nature don't fucking care they're giant fucking evil dragons kill them all uh and it's like the fact that you can create jean luc you know jean luc or measure head as easy as you can, it's like, oh, okay. Or how all the mechs feel very similar to one another because they are all just built from those set amount of parts. You can design it differently, but it's going to be kind of like, well, here's my build. I'm not going to deviate far from my build. Because why would I? There's no reason for me to deviate from my build. And... That's pretty much it. Again, it's just like, you gotta make sure to track everything. And you're gonna have multiple people being like, okay, wait, it's my turn. No, it's not my turn. It's the allied phase. I've already done one action. Make sure that you mark it on your synergy track that you already used an action. Being like, no, I didn't mark it on my synergy track. So you didn't use an action, but maybe I did use an action. Oh, did you spend enough synergy to it? So, ooh. I don't hate it. That's the thing. I don't hate it. I think it is a confused game in some respects, and it needs to start chopping. There's some things that need to get chopped, and I don't think it, this is not the kind of game that they want to chop things. They want to add more powers, they want to add more explanations, and they want to make sure that everything is there. But there's a reason why there are fucking there there are multiple folders in this thing just to give you an idea i'm just going through like the actual folders they give you of everything that they they are kind of intending you to vaguely use uh there's a bunch of you want to have a bunch of crossover mechs because of course they have a bunch of crossover mechs from different things oh wow look everyone it's the maharlika you get it from maharlika because of course he's got you know, his, uh, let's see, the, you know, blip. yeah, there, there, there's, there's a couple, you know, of these, of course there are, right? Why wouldn't there be, you know, a bunch of, you know, crossover ones, which are completely different and do their own thing, of course. Uh, let me see, kit bashing sheet, you, like, you want here, let's kit bash, here's, here's all of this information, like, here's the empty boss sheet, here's the empty mechanics sheet. Make sure to note all this down. Now, this is form fillable, by the way. That's important. Here's the here's the training mech. This is what a training mech looks like. And let's do where, where's some other. Hey, do you want some VTT assets? Yeah, they they they, they hand you some straight up like there's some fucking VTT assets for you to fuck around with because yeah, of course they would. Why why wouldn't they? And it's, I don't hate it. I am just very, very. I think this guy is aiming for the stars and on, I am hoping he doesn't turn this into a baby project that will never be finished. Because this is the kind of project that we will hear about in three years where version one has come out and it's not done yet. That's kind of the that's kind of the thing there. It's like version one, you know, coming out beta phase. Don't worry, it'll it'll come out soon. Then it'll be another three years, and it. This is the kind of game that can very easily go on forever and never release. Uh hopefully not. 
I hope, th I, I hope he cleans things up because that's the that's the big thing right now for me. It's hopefully he cleans things up. Now, of course, I think it's time to go over a very special game. Ah, uh, very special game for a uh, here's Salvage Union. This is Salvage Union. Salvage Union, Salvage Union, Salvage Union. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, a little bit going on here. A uh, little bit, little, little bit, little bit going on here. What is, uh, what is, what is Salvage Union? Salvage Union is we go to salvage union you kind of see what i was looking up there uh salvage union is a is a game by leyline press you yeah, know let's go to leyline press leyline press is a game that has that is a group that has done salvage union they've also and you see here you know all the core bundles you know foundation you know digital edition horse girl yes they did horse girl Yes, a uh, a game where you uh, transform into a horse girl uh, through rampant abuse in the strangest thing I've ever had the displeasure of reading. Uh, surgical and mental transformation into a horse by the love of your life. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, um, late live press is a little weird, but yeah, you know, to, to buy everything, it's, it's about 60 bucks. Ain't cheap. It was a Kickstarter. Now this Kickstarter came out a while ago. So, uh, if we, if we go all the way back in time, all the way back to the past, as you could say, uh, da, 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 da. This game officially launched in uh, December 1st, 2021. <laughs> Come again? Yes, it's a game about mentally... Uh, yes, they published a game about becoming a horse girl. Uh, but not the fun Ume Mizume variety. But yes, this is... Yeah, this they, they launched in December 1st of 2021. Effectively... Effectively speaking, 2022 is when this project started. I uh, got fully funded. They said, hey, estimated delivery one year, effectively, after that. Salvage Union came out this year. Uh, if we do the actual, like, if we do, sal let me find Salvage Union. I believe it's on DTRPG, I believe. Uh, if we find it on the Quick Start, Digital Edition Quick Start is here. Let's see, Leyline Press. I mean, uh, no, it's not here. We'll talk about you in a section. Second, uh, let's see. This game because they updated this. You know, June twenty. You know, June fifteenth, twenty twenty two. If we go to the comment section, still haven't received my pledge. Just received my order, and the book is gorgeous. Literally, this effectively came out this year it's about two years two years late and it is seven year you know it's people are moving this game has been around for a while i believe as early as possible would be 2019 is when the first mentions of this happened you kind of see here they've done different games a lot of um a lot of little games if that makes sense. You can just kind of see here, they're also from London Town, London Land. Uh, you want to do a world building game. You want to talk about turning a, into a horse girl because what the fuck are you smoking, motherfucker? Holy shit. Uh, werewolves. Zine, they do a lot of zine quest things. Albion Tales for o OSC because they love OSC. OSC is the greatest thing ever. Uh, zines, lots of zines. Salvage Union is their first big game. It's been around again since about 2019. That's when I kind of did the best here. Now, 
there's a few things to note about this one that's a little bit interesting to talk about. Uh, this is Shadow of Mog, because uh, this man right here, uh, Pea Pea and Penny Yotilis, uh, or Penny Lines, uh, is a how do I want to word it? A fucking communist. They are a fucking communist of the worst variety. Uh, a a communist that I want to shoot by you know line on a wall and shoot. Uh, but yeah, Penny here in you know panties here is a actual honest to god communist. They have blocked me. <laughs> uh, I did literally go around and used uh used a uh, alt effectively to look. It's nothing but communist nonsense as usual. Now you may be wondering, no pet. This sounds pretty bad. If I go to Leyline Press, I'm also blocked. There's a reason for this. <laughs> Fun fact. Uh, this is Penny. Yeah, he, they, works on writing and design elements of our tabletop role-playing games and modules. He also handles social media, PR, and marketing. Uh, Penny here, as, uh, let's, uh, let's zoom in on him a little bit. Uh, Penny here, uh, blocked me from everything because, uh, I believe I said, uh, I believe this was during one of their bigger controversies. This, however, has led to a very funny situation. Were Alids fine? This is Alid. Alid's a very normal person. He likes uh, OSC a little bit. Uh, that's all you gotta really know. Uh, this is one of those things where he is a... Alid here is you know it, it's one of those things L London based tabletop now we produce indie role playing games OSC mothership uh, art and layout expert tactile material altern alternative print methods uh, generally speaking uh, I believe Alid has wrote most of the games that's one thing to note. I think Alid is the main writer. I don't think Panty actually uh, writes anything. Uh, and if they do, I can usually tell because it is communist gobbledygook. Yes, so I will get to that right now, actually. So, there was a little bit of controversy with these guys. Because if we go to Leyline, Leyline, uh, Leyline Press Controversy... What occurred, this was a few, this was a few, this was last year, about, about mid last year, mid, mid late last year. Leyline Press uh, literally cut ties with an editor because they worked on, Le on uh, Flame Princess, Imitations of the Flame Princess. They literally fired this dude uh, because of, you worked on a game we do not agree with because we don't like Raggy. Because you worked on that, and they have you have despicable things because they are fucking communists, and all communists belong on the rope. It's actually quite amazing how over time I have become more radical hatred toward communism and the entire thing simply because people are fucking stupid, and I just hate people. Uh, praise for tabletop RPGs such as mutants and werewolves. Don't think about it. Uh, generally speaking. Yeah, you know, you know, Dear Alt, it's come to our attention that one of our editors on Salvage Union is currently working on Lamentations of the Flame Princess with problematic works other than received widespread critique for bigotry and other harmful issues. They effectively fired this guy for working on Lamentations. First things first, a little weird, and I said, hey, that's a little weird. Like, it's he seems to be a pretty normal... Yeah, uh, as you can kind of see here, seems he got, uh, he got nay-nayed. Uh. Yeah, you know, it's, you know, we believe these are highly problematic games by authors and companies whose politics and actions we vehemently disagree with. We're sorry we did not do so carefully as we should. Even though, this is one thing you gotta also remember, um, Raggy pays his freelancers fucking well. And from all Salvage Union books, we will not be working... Th like, you gotta remember that. Raggy pays his fucking freelancers real fucking good. You 
Yeah, rob a freelancer of the credit they are due. Yeah, uh... Well, parts of it about actually salvaging things and panic about uh, alien about wrote the aliens and ultra violence. Uh, no, not the aliens and ultra violence. He wrote pro I can almost guarantee you that uh, Pantaloons wrote almost everything about communism and how we all are working together and how some people are more equal than others. Yeah, it's uh, this is just one of those weird things. For all I know, he worked on the, like, we should kill all the women, you know, fucking book. I don't think he did, probably, because that would be fucking stupid. But, like, one thing to note is that Raggy pays his people very well. Raggy pays above average. Easy on Lamentation. There's a reason people like working on Lamentations books, because Raggy will fucking pay you well. And it's kind of weird that, like, oh, well, we took it out. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of the basics of it. Generally speaking, one thing as well that I find very interesting, very, very fascinating with um, Salvage Union is um, Salvage Union doesn't actually have a custom system. This is just one thing you got to kind of understand. Salvage Union is using already using an established system of quest. They didn't write their own game. They wrote they uh, it's a hack effectively. Of a game we've already gone over, and you kind of see all these other things. They, yeah, removing the fucking editor. A uh, little shitty. Not gonna lie. A little, little shitty. Uh, you know, powered by the Quest RPG. Yep. You can buy Quest for free, by the way. Don't buy Quest. It's not very good, and we're going to... I, if you've ever watched the video of me going over Quest, I have already established why I don't like Quest, and I will, and those same critiques do extend here better but not as bad. you know here's the collaborators uh yeah the post brexit rpg yeah marketing executive yep it's he's a fucking man permanent communist permanent fucking communisms uh writers and editors i believe yeah I don't believe any of these guys were it. Unless it was one of them. Yeah, let, let's, uh... Oh, he's RPG Latin America. Oof. Yo, Luke Green. Yeah, it's most likely a lot of OSR, a lot of OSR things, a lot of... The usual, the usual indie, indie slop. Indie schlop. But yeah, fulfill the project by descending that income out. So, very basic. I've been blocked on all fronts. Don't worry. They're usually just promoting their main game. Uh, again, Panty has written literally nothing else except in Mothership, Shadow of Mog, and Salvage Union. Uh, no one else really, they haven't really written anything else. Uh, Alid is, wrote these two things. It's kind of like, I don't think either of these guys are really accomplished game designers in any remote capacity, and I don't think they actually, uh... And I, I don't think they really want to. So, generally, let's get to the, uh, let's get to the mess. So, we need a man who I felt that would be most appropriate for assisting us and learning about the glories of communism. Uh, oh, one... I think the the only person that we could really really call upon was a, uh, of course, uh, go up here, Mr. Claire, Mr. Everard e. Claire. Say hello to Mr. Uh, Evart Claire, Evart Claire, I should say. Uh, for those who don't know the, uh, for those who don't know the uh, the reference here, let me uh, let me let me bring him up. The the only communist I can respect. Uh, I keep saying Evert because I want to say that. Welcome to Evert. Welcome to Evert Claire. Uh, to or Evert Claire. Uh, the the only communist worth talking about. Uh, here's going to be our man going forward. So we're going to learn how to be communists together. So let's get to it. 
salvage union. This is the entire game. Okay, we good? Have you have you understood the entirety of of this? Because the entirety of salvage union is D20. Roll on this chart. Core mechanic. This is it. Outstanding success, success, tough choice, failure. That's it. That is the, this is the, this is the entirety of the game. It is not a very complicated game. And I find that very funny. Is this hard? Uh, you see like page 253, page two. Yeah. Uh, all of this nonsense. Don't worry about it. Credits. Writing, you know, Alan. Game development, Alan. <laughs> That's what it's the thing, like, game development, Alan. I looked at Malcolm Illrid, Illage. Uh, could not find anything on Malcolm Illage. Uh, couldn't really find anything there. Layout and design, Alan. That's why I say, like, Alan looks like he has a lot more, um... A lot more influence than I think. Uh, one interesting note there. One just fascinating. It's one just fascinating. Uh, I believe that's what he goes by MRC uh, thing is if we look at who the other editor is. It's pantaloons. How strange. How how very strange. Am I implying there might have been some jealousy? Uh, possibly. Uh, possibly. There might have been some, hey, you just did this better. Like, you're, you're an actual editor who does good jobs here. Uh... Alternative, there, there's a few, there's a few things going on here. Uh, that I thought was a little bit fun a little bit funky. But this is looks like he's just a professional editor, mostly. Uh, here's Jarrett. Here's Jarrett Crater. Maelstrom Dreamers. Uh interesting enough, he she, he did get met he did get interviewed on the Bone Box chat. No no have no fear. We he did get Bone Box chant, we meet again. Uh, I believe it is literally just a. Let, let me see if we can if we go here. They get blocked here. Uh, that in. I guess. Is are you Jarrett? I don't think you're Jarrett. Yeah. Oh hi, Charlotte. Yeah. This is who we're dealing with. I think it's just an editor. But again, it is a very convenient thing that there was an ed that conveniently this person is an editor and they removed an editor from this. Because you gotta remember, they got removed completely. They are not in the final release. All the work they did has been effectively ignored. Now, interestingly enough, everything has been ignored and now it looks like these two people edited everything. How convenient. How very, very convenient. I'm making no implications, everyone. I'm just simply saying it's very comp- Very, uh... Very, very interesting. So. Generally speaking, the game begins on page 232 of 340. This is why when I say, like, this is what you actually need to play, like, oh, it's really convenient and stuff. I wish this was easier to read because I really hate this. I, I can't read this very well. You can't print this out either unless you get, like, a another sheet effectively. This isn't something you can just hit Control-P, you know, and, you know, fucking print out very well. Uh, yeah, the mechs make no fucking sense, by the way. So, one thing to note, yeah, 
all of this down here, this is where the game begins. None of this real. this is all character shit or building things. The rest of this is you kind of see like, oh, how do we actually, you know, salvage things on 244? And there's four pages of how to salvage things. There is technically four pages of learning how to salvage. Uh, the actual game itself is about 30 pages. The entirety of this is how to make a character. It's not even that interesting. So let's see. A very basic un understanding of the lore. Post-apocalyptic world, similar to Earth, but far, far in the future. The world is ravaged. Mechs are super commonplace. Corpos dominate the world because corporate elements are bad. Corps are baddies. Uh, the salvage unions resist. The salvage unions form a resistance to corpo way of life. And they resign themselves to static slow death in the ways, nor the authoritarian rule of the corpos. And then instead, they form their own self-sustaining communities by joining together workers, salvages, pilots, technicians, cooks, and all manner of free spirits. We will learn that this is a lie. I want you to remember this. This is a lie told to you by the game. Uh, and I just want you to remember a very distinct line here. Um, all wasters are equal, but others, but some wasters are more equal than others. This is a very important thing to understand. Yeah, there's no real consistency to how the mechs look. They're just like, oh, they're like quadrupedal titans, and there's just like tunneling constructions, walking cities. It's like, okay, and they're just kind of there. Mm. Uh, yeah, you should also bully wasters. There's no reason why you literally cannot find in there and just open up fire on them and steal all their shit. There's no reason you shouldn't. Uh, they 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 try to make it out to be like, oh, that's a bad action, being like, but no, we're all we're going to survive here. And you know, say, why don't you? The war crime coefficient is quite high in this game. You can commit some atrocities against humanity. Um, but yeah, generally speaking, uh, of course there are kaiju bio titans. Of course there are. Uh, and there's also nano mach nano machines, intelligent alien entity. Um, literally, these two sections right here do kind of clash with something. I think they just wanted more enemies. Uh, there is hope. Salvagers and Storm was once lost and helped them regrow their communities, welcoming wastelanders and all others into the fold. Feels monolithic and oppressive. Uh, n you cannot play Corpos, uh, though nothing is stopping you from playing Corpos in this game. Uh, various stop signs. No X card, though. I don't believe there's any X cards in this game. Um, the, these include exploitation, authoritarianism, violence, poverty, and trauma. Yeah, nothing is saying you can't play a corporate scrap team, uh, which would be kind of funny in its own right. Generally speaking, it's the conversation talk. We've already known about that. Every single thing is done via that D20. I've got my D20 right here. Everything is D20. Generally speaking, everything starts at tech level 1. Uh, and that's just something we gotta know. Uh, for the longest time, I also thought this was uh, the Tales from the Loop guy. <laughs> Fun fact. Uh, I thought it was all the Tales from the Loop artists doing all of these. It's not. Uh, <laughs> Fun fact. So. This is how you make a character. Uh, one thing to note, they will not tell you this again. They kind of just expect you to memorize this. So write all these things down as best you can. Uh, because get ready, because it's going to get a little bit long. So, we got our pilot sheet here. You got 10 HP. You get you reach 0 HP, you're going to get wounded and probably die. And everyone's going to make fun of you. Abilities. Now... Abilities are strange. You have one ability, and new abilities can be trained during downtime. Pretty much any time you end a session, you get downtime. Now, you have AP. This is one thing from Quest that I didn't care for. The idea is that everyone has ability points. 
and this AP is the magic mystical super currency that does everything. I want to activate an ability, I am spending AP to do it. I want to ask a question, I will probably have to spend AP to do it. AP is a magic currency, it does everything you want it to do, and you have to use it to do any of your cool abilities. You get 5 AP. You get a lot. Uh, inventory slots, because again, you don't have an inventory, you have inventory slots. Uh, you do can carry scrap, but it takes up a lot, and you only have 6 inventory. Uh, generally speaking, that means you have 6 items on your person. I see down here, six items on my person. I you only start with two. You start. I start with a portable communication unit and a handheld riveting gun. Because why shouldn't you start with a riveting gun? All of this doesn't mean anything. These are okay. The, these are the pilot classes. This looks fucking atrocious uh, and is very hard to read. But I'm going to explain it the best I can. Every single one of these are a main class. Soldier, Hacker, Engineer, Hauler, Scout, Salvager. These are, are pretty much hybrid classes. You trade out having more exotic... You, kind of, you, you trade out having more exotic gear for more, more options. So an Engineer or Hauler can become a Union Rep, while a Scout or Hauler can become a Smuggler, and you know, Ranger, Cyborg, Fabricator, various other things. These are your skill trees inside of it. So as you can see, I have Tactical Warfare and Survivalist and Gladiatorial Combat. For Soldier, if I go to Advanced Soldier, I get all of the Advanced Soldier tech. If I go for Advanced Ranger, I get all the Advanced Ranger tech. But if I go for Ranger, I'm going to be locked out of the Recon and Sleuth tree. That's kind of the basic idea. Salvagers are unique. Because a salvager has access to every single tree, but he can never get any of the advanced stuff. You have the un unmitigated options for everything, but you never get any of the really nice things. That's the that's the trade-off. Uh, this is a little bit weird, and we're gonna try my I'm gonna try my best to explain it. So, everyone, everything costs trading points, TP. You get training points by completing missions, but you don't actually need to complete missions. You just do downtime. Every downtime, you do things. Also, editing error. Man, if only you had someone who was an editor. Maybe we would have caught this. Uh, yeah, I will say uh, there are small things. Every now and again, you will notice tiny errors, not huge ones. Uh... It's one of those things where I had the idea of like, oh, they fired an editor, and then I noticed small editing issues like this, and uh, that gets me, that gets, that gets you thinking a little bit. That gets you, that gets you, gets you wondering. Gets you, gets the mind. You start thinking. Is that a bad thing to do? Yes, you should never think. Thinking is bad. So. Generally speaking, you don't really level up by doing things. This is, this is one of those weird part. One of those weird parts. You don't like level up by like, oh, I am going to gun you down. I have gunned down fifteen mechs uh, and strangled them, and you know, got out of my mech, ripped open your, you know, ripped open your fucking hull, and then beat you to death with a wrench. I don't get experience points for that. I don't get a. I don't get bonuses. What I get is I get to go into back home train and they get a training point to train more. So you may choose one ability trees during character creation. Abilities m m must be chosen in consecutive order. All pilot classes, except for salvager, can have 10 pilot abilities. You can only have 10 abilities, which you also need to spend points to get rid of. Which is also one of those like, oh, okay. So I picked up read a person. That was the first thing I picked up. You have a knack for being able to read people during a conversation. Choose an NPC you are in a conversation with. You know, with during the conversation, you can spend one AP to learn the following options. What they intend to do soon. What the 
target wants. What are they feeling? The internally emotes, emotes that, and you're probably looking at this being like, oh no. Welcome to the quest life, everyone. Uh, where abilities don't really mean much, and it's like, uh-oh, okay. All right. So, yeah, technically it costs me one of my five AP to actually read a person, because... I can't make any checks or anything because if you notice here, there's no um, there's no attributes, there's no you know skills or anything like that. What there is is roll one d twenty and read the result. Usually abilities don't give you bonuses. Abilities let you uh, how do abilities let you do something or make a roll rather than give you a bonus to it. Everyone's going to be, you're always going to be rolling that d20. I rolled a 9. Doesn't matter what I do, I rolled a 9. I did not succeed. No matter what, no matter what I say, I didn't succeed. Oh no, I, I rolled a 19. I succeed. I did good. Good job, me. I've won. So, you know, I provide you with one training point. If you go over here, everything costs one. Advanced abilities and hybrid class abilities cost two. So it's going to take a lot longer to get hybrid classes. In total, to kind of complete everything, it's going to take you a couple sessions, minimum. Unless you, the GM, are handing out free ability points, which you shouldn't, because that's not how the game works. They do, they want to uh, they want to restrict your movement a lot in this game when it comes to when it comes to character development. Because they uh, you will quickly realize you don't have enough points to play with. Uh, you know, let's take three abilities in the forging tree. And it's like, all right, hey, legendary abilities. Three points. You must have six core abilities and three advanced abilities before you train a legendary. Oh, no. And then you can also spend one training point to forget abilities. Why? I don't know. But you, yep. Yeah. Have no fear. You can unlearn things if you want because it's just not useful so, this is what a basic character this is an engineer for example an integral part of the salvage crew you want to do all these things you can advance to fabricate or union rep so this is why this book is 340 pages by the way is uh because a it is in a b5 format one thing it's a b5 game and they do a lot of this. It's like, here's an entire page of everything you need to know with it. You gotta take one, two, three, one, two, three. Then you get to go into the signature abilities, then, then the legendary abilities. So, this is what engineering expertise does. You spend one AP. You're able to answer questions pertaining to your mechanical or engineering topics. You may ask the mediator two questions to cover the, these areas, and, you must an and they must answer truthfully. You can use this ability to ask for full stats of any mecha chassis, system, module, or pilot equipment that you can see and interact with as one of these questions. The burning interestingness, the, the burning interest of uh, Salvage Union's characters. Uh, to give you an idea, 95% of these are like this. 3 AP, you can talk shop. Cool. With other mechanic salvagers. Neat. You're now friendly with these NPCs because we need to mechanically burn this to make them do things for us because we don't have anything else. Yep. You know, like mech tech. I want to do, let's see, let's see. Field, mass field main. 3 AP may store 12 SP between all target mechs. Ooh, wow. Burn my limited AP to... Restore a little bit of haze. If I cut this wire. Oh, cool. Pick a system model on a target mech within range. Oh, no. Oh, oh. Yeah, a lot of this is either you're trying to avoid rolling or you're trying to get an option to do another roll. This is incredibly boring to me. <laughs> not, not going to lie. I'm not going to try to be like, oh, well, I'm going to be... No, I find this incredibly fucking boring. Because it's like, okay, like, oh boy, this goes to 11. Wow, you're able to overcharge a mech reactor. 
overcharge you know for the next hour it can push twice instead of its attacks or actions re-rolling the same die twice cool it uses the push rule which means that you have to take heat which makes you make rolls which could kill you like oh boy i want to play a hacker man who's hacking people hack the planet man ask questions gain a bunch of optic sites i can do a hacking kit you know, denial of service attack, hollow companions, biotic legs. It's like, all right. I chose to play a hauler. Two reasons. One, obviously, this is the uh, this is the quintessential hauler, uh, where it looks like uh, she has firmly given up hope, and those eyes are dead on the inside. Uh, bad mother effa. Uh, because we can't say fuck. Because you know. Of course, union representative, you know, union haulers who are, you know, hardcore assholes, uh, of course, are going to uh, balk after the opportunity to say fuck. With everything else in there, we laugh at this person. We laugh at her because I might I have a full sleeve of fucking tattoos that effectively spell out every person I've killed, you know, for salvage and being like, hey. What's up, bad mother effer? Ha ha ha, hoo hoo hoo, hee hee hee, hoo hoo hoo. You know, 50 cal machine gun, like that. Uh, so, then they get, read a person, you can learn information about someone, increase the cargo capacity of a mech, set the mood with a folk song. Oh. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's one of those things where you're like, cuckoo, ka choo choo Like, I want to be, like, I want to have this, or I want to have that, no. Hey, bigger is what the vest. Effectively, you want to be just a big motherfucker, you gotta take the beefcake ability. Uh, just make a big character, that's all you gotta do. Master Sal, hauling all day. All in all day and all in all night. Trucking and fucking is what I crave. Yeah, salvagers are pretty fucking lame. Salvagers seem like a weird class to put in because the entire thing is that they get everything and that's their gimmick. It's like it's like maybe we could maybe we can do something more with that rather than that here's the everything class. Uh Scout, see this comically large gun? Comically large guns don't exist really. Uh, they don't really do anything, and if you do have a comically large gun, you probably aren't using it to fight anything. Uh, yeah, ask questions, ask questions, ask questions. Well, actually, no, shoot first isn't asking a question necessarily. Shoot first is activating a, you know, activate this, and you naturally roll a 20 without having to roll a 20. Yep. Do AP and you get to avoid making a roll. Congratulations. Two structure points. Yep, you can get a custom custom sniper rifle to not get in the fucking not get in the fucking mech. Yep. Soldier people fight. That's all you really need to know. They fight. You wanna have a custom missile launcher? Cool. Don't get in the mech because that's not a mech thing. Join Aeon Privateer Partnership. Mm -hmm. I want all right, I want to be a privateer partnership. That sounds cool. But these are the advanced these are the kind of the more advanced ones. Kind of give you an idea. You see, hey, okay, augmented tree from the hacker class and they get this one from the gladiator from the uh comp from the soldier class so if you started as a hacker you're going to have these ones already but if you start as a soldier you're already going to have these now you can take the other one and then you can get all these you know very you know more uh more abilities and more uh more uh benefits you could say uh, fabricators build shit very useful actually uh, if you want to play that kind of game, 
Uh, Rangers just have a comically oversized gun that they don't get in the mech for. Uh, always remember that. Don't get in the mech. Now, if I'm if you notice I'm speeding through this a little bit, it's because they are all the exact same. We are we are seventy we are seventy percent way through. Uh and it's it takes a while. Not gonna lie, it takes a while. Uh and generally speaking, this is uh how I would want to get Mr. Claire to go is down the union rep tree where I would have to become of the union rep, because I find that very funny. Uh, various pieces of pilot equipment. Now, you see here, you also want just two pieces of tech. This is the item list, most of the time. Uh, and you see, like, redacted, deauthorized, none of that actually works. That's not real. So, this is what the handheld rivet gun actually does. It lets you actually heal which is really good, and you should you should actually, you know, take it, because, hey, handheld rivet gun for 4 AP, you can get a new fucking, you can get a mech. Hey, that's cool. But it's like improvised melee weapon, you do 2 HP damage, or you can pick up an improvised melee weapon. Why, why wouldn't you just do that? Hey, it's a salvaging tool. You can't get the Tech 2 stuff unless you buy it later on, and it's like, oh boy, it's a polycarbonate shield, or just a fucking gun. Laser rifles, grenades, hazard protection suits, healing biofoam, military armaments. But all of this really does boil down to, oh hey, like, you want to get an actual, like, shotgun? That's tier 3. You know, probably one of the simplest concepts of a weapon available. It costs, um... It's a technically a rank 3 weapon. The, the rank 3 entity. Because shotguns are incredibly complex. Even more complex than a, a full-on revolver or healing foam. Uh, shotguns, though, those are catastrophic. We can't get a hold of those. I can always tell this is made by someone from the UK. Uh, doesn't really mean anything. Yeah, oh boy, it's redacted. Union registry three three ninety eight point seventy three beta fission gun. Oh wow, this is that's cool. You're not gonna get these for a while. Make roll a call sign. Roll a background. Does the background really do many things? Not really. Or yeah, does your call sign do anything? No. Uh, your background does do something, I should say. If you do something that aligns with your, if I go pilot sheet, do something that aligns with your motto, keepsake, or background, you actually get to two reroll the dice. You effectively get advantage on a roll. So because I am a professional union boss, because I'm a professional union boss, anytime that comes up, I will take my d20, I rolled an 11, I used to re-roll, and I got a 3, so I would take the 11. Easy enough to understand. That's it. Uh, hey, what's a keepsake? Takes an eye line with keepsake, they may re-roll the dice on that action. Motto table. Phrase and... Oh no, they may do the exact same thing. Keepsakes, motto, and uh, backgrounds all do the exact same thing. Uh, appearance doesn't really do anything. AI personality system, sort of, not really a thing, does it anything. But now we get into the actual, the, the meat and potatoes, you could say. Welcome to the mech workshop, everyone. Let's learn about a mech workshop. Now, of course, I've, I've made myself a scrapper unioneer. Uh, I, I decide to say, hey, okay, this is my this is my thing, and I chose purposefully, very purposefully, to build my own, not use one of the pre-established ones, because I'm going to go down here, explain a very basic stat, do explain something very easily. We'll use the mule, for example. This is the mule. Now, one thing to note as well, this is a 
little bit of a controversial thing, a little bit not, depends on who you're talking to. Ethical will say that it is. Uh, I think people were just... One of the things is there were debates that the salvage union mech designs were stolen from other things, or they were just copy pasted from other places. Uh, there are some similarities, yeah. Uh, but one of the things with uh, you'll notice quickly, very quickly with Salvage Union is that the mechs have really no consistency among them. There's no, like, real, like, oh, hey, this is, like, clearly what a, what a mech looks like. Or, hey, this is what clearly, like, the basic of design principles. Because you can do whatever you want with them, and it really doesn't matter. Uh, this is one of those things that's like, all right, cool. So... Very basics. Structure points. This is your health. Structure hits zero. You're gonna have. You're gonna start having a bad time. Energy points. How much energy does it actually take to do something? Do you have enough energy to use certain items, use certain abilities? Heat cap. How much heat is our system actually? Can can we take? And heat allows you to do special abilities. Allows you to you know tap into certain effects as well as keep you alive. Heat dissipates over an hour. This isn't like something that you can very easily kind of vent out. Any fight you get into is going to be, hey, let's burn heat. System slots. The number of actual systems you can install. Modules, number of modules you can install. You can kind of think of like a system is a universal thing. A module is kind of more of a bigger thing. Uh, how much cargo can we put in? what the tech level is, and what the salvage value is. So, uh, tech level is pretty much how powerful it is, uh, and how, you know, kind of how un how durable things are. High tech level things are going to be really nice, really fancy, and going to be the things that we do. We're like, hoo, 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 time for, time for fucking. We're ready to go. Your salvage value is how much it actually costs. Now, one thing about the salvage value is that salvage is actually broken down into tech levels. So, when it says tech, you know, when it says tech level, tech level one, you know, tech level one salvage, salvage value seven, what it's saying is, it is saying seven times tech, uh, tech level, tech level one scrap. That is what it's saying. Tech level one scrap. This is important because a single mech will fund your entire colony ten times over. Like your most of the time, your actual salvage union needs like five things to upkeep itself relatively consistently. Uh, just kill people and steal their mechs. And there's no reason for you not to do that. Uh, now, one thing to note: if we go all the way back up here. Mm, is that everything has salvage value. I'll say this. This is one thing that it's somewhat... Actually, no, it doesn't really work very well at all. Um, oh, yeah, no. Energy points are effectively... Uh, energy points are mech action points. That's the best way to think about it. Now, the thing is with um, salvage is that you have to look at a mech as the sum of its parts. Y'all look very random, made to fit any setting instead of Mobius like desert they promised. Yeah, you get used to it. Also, the diagonal labels aren't the same size as the squares, and it's killing me. Yeah, it's it's physical pain, but don't worry. Don't worry. The editors and, and layout people did a really good job, Usa. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh so very easy to kind of understand. Now, this is what I mean by the patterns. These don't actually exist. These are not real. These are easy to find patterns that are available everywhere. You want a very basic, I just want to get up and start playing, holler pattern. This is what you have, and these are the modules, and it's a legal tech one build for a starting mech. Because at the end of the day, if we go all the way back up here, you have 20 tech one scrap to play with. And you can use that scrap to craft your first mech. You gotta choose a mech chassis, you gotta pay that much mech, you gotta pay everything, you gotta give it a name, of course, you gotta give it everything there. And everything, you you got pretty much 20 bucks to play with, that's what you gotta think about. And there are quite a few different ones, and uh, we'll, we'll just go through some of the ones that I find, you know, the Mezzona, the L1. Uh, 
Uh, we can play a buzzard if we want. Uh, I played a scrapper. Let's see here. Uh, playing a scrapper, Union Ear. And I, it's a good all-round one. If you want a good all-around uh, mech that's going to do its job, this one's going to do its job. Technically, they're like, oh, well, you should do a leaky, leaky, you know, leaky system, leaky pattern. It's so good. And I said, nah, fuck that. Uh, because we're, we're, we're going to play efficient. We're going to play more efficient than that. Uh, put gun, let's you know, bump up the transport, do the locomotion, do a chainsaw arm and a rigging arm. Okay, easy enough to understand. Uh, actually, that here, yeah, okay. Now, this is one thing to note. Do you see this locomotion system? Uh, you have to take it. This is what this is one of those weird emissions where we'll get to when we get kind of down there. It's a very particular thing. A spectrum. You want to play a thresher. The best way to think about it is that you kind of need to look like this is actually an illegal mech. You can't actually buy that because it takes 10 salvage 2. Uh, to give you an idea, in total, this is worth 20 level level 1 uh, level 1 uh, scrap. Because there's uh, perfect exchange rates. Gophers. Now, welcome to the first real combat mech. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, this is the this is the gopher. This is the first kind of real combat mech. Uh... And because this is the kind of the first real one, you aren't really supposed to get into combat mechs, really. They can, you can, but you don't really need to. Uh, quite a few in Jackhammer, obviously. Oh, here's, ooh. Ugh. Goodness gracious, I'm sneeding. You know, the Kraken. You want to do a land and water one? Yeah, it costs a shit ton of money, but you can. Magpie, you get it, it. Sounds like you get a lot of options, and you do get a lot of options, uh, including the complete fucking meme atlas. You want to have an atlas mech? There's no real scale for this, though. It's just comically massive. You know, the uh, first real actual combat mech, the brawler class, uh, the little Sestra. Mantis. These look very weird sometimes because they'll just kind of like put them in random places. Photons. Golos. You want to play a Terra. An Aegis. We can't get any of these, by the way. We're not going to get these for a while because you kind of see, yeah, this is tech four. This is tech level four and salvage eight and salvage value eight. So. Effectively, how salvage works is salvage is based off a perfect exchange rate. That's all you gotta really think about. It's it's a perfect exchange rate between everything. You know, to a uh, two level, you know, two level one, uh, you know, two. Mm, mm, that's the best way to think about it. Two tech level one scrap is equal to one tech level two scrap. So in total, this thing, the Aeon, the, or the Aegis, I should say, the Aegis, is technically worth, as it is a TL4, it's TL4 and 8SV, it is technically worth, more like Excelsius. Yeah, we're not, we're not dealing with creativity. Technically, this is worth... 32, this is 32 TL1 scrap. And it's like, yeah, all right, that's what you should do. This is just the base value of the chassis, nothing else. It's the base level of the chassis. Yeah, you know, within the frozen gulf, this mech was near worship and protector deity of the settlement. Yeah, you want to have a giant dad pattern? Oh, uh, you want to fight? You want to, oh, I want to be in a colossus. How much is the colossus at? It's going to bankrupt us. That's how much. It's it's bankrupting us. Then you get shit like the console. That's just a dude. That's not a fucking mech. That's a fucking dude. Uh, yeah, there is... I never really got a sense of the scale of certain things. Because, like, if we go all the way back up. 
We go to some of these. This seems like, like this, if this is like a, a drone the size of a person, like these things are fucking huge. Like this is a fucking aircraft carrier that's walking. On the other hand, if we scroll down here a little bit, this looks like he goes up to like, this looks like it's about six, like maybe 10 feet tall. Maybe. Because if like he stands up full, is he going to go up to the leg? If he goes up to like the leg, then like, yeah, he just kind of like throws himself into the cockpit there. And that's really it. Like, there really isn't a good sense of scale in this game of how big or how small your, your actual mechs are. And I never really got the impression of like, oh, hey, this thing is fucking huge. Like, how big is this thing? Is it like my, am I like right here or am I like in this entire like cockpit here? Because that does change how certain things interact with one another. Like, oh, hey, you know, I am a, you know, I'm, fucking, this thing is fucking small versus like, if this is a 15 meter tall fucking death mech. Roll all the way down here, by the way. We don't need it. We don't need any of this, by the way. We're moving. Don't worry. We're getting there. Let's get back to where we were. We are past page 100 at this point. Don't worry. We're, we're, we're getting there, everyone. Okay. Yeah, the Atlas Umbrella Brawla. Mantis Photon. Okay, let's go a little bit further. No, a little bit further. Console meme. The, the drop bear. <laughs> yeah, this is like a weird Macross mech. Yeah, uh, let's see. The Vorpal. Want to have a TL4. Vorpal, heat efficient mech designed to mount vastly oversized mining lasers. Every single one of these do have like an actual ability with them, a chassis ability. And I'm like, all right, that's fine. Like it, it, there's clearly options, but it's like, oh, stealth projector. How much energy do you have? You have 15 energy points. Okay. Like you're not going to get these at all. Neurophage. Cool. That's just a dude. <laughs> like that's not a mech. That's a person. Then you get like, oh, here's the iron worm. Like, this is a tunneling mech. I'm like, holy shit, this thing's fucking huge. This isn't a mech, this is a fucking land ship. Ooh. Ah, I got my back right there. Ooh. Snap my back into place. That feels good, baby. A Leviathan. Yo, it's like, I want to play the Leviathan. No, you fucking don't. He's going to bankrupt us. On the other hand, it's got all of these, you know, special abilities to actually play with. So, that's kind of, and like, these are, this is what I mean by, like, this is all you get for tech level one. Tech level two, tech level three. These are, this is every system that you can get. Because I think the idea is that they're going to put out more expansions for it later on, and more expansions means more tech, more toys, more things to play with. And they can't give you everything right away. Because uh, we don't have enough time for that. So, for example, let's use this. I have a 50 caliber machine gun. Uh, with a 50 caliber machine gun, I have a... It is tech level 1. It takes 2 slots. And it is TL. And it is worth 2 scrap. I go over here. I've got uh, system slots. I have 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Cool. I'm, I'm full on. I can I can use all of these things. And I chose this because if I get to close damage, I hold down the I hold down the trigger and you die. Where do you learn about jamming and pinning? You may wonder. Let's just learn a little bit. Like what what, what happens? At, where do I learn about jamming? Okay, it's got to be somewhere, right? Like it's got to be around here. Like it's got to be pretty easy. For jamming is. Nope, no, no. Oh, yes. We learn about jamming on page 320, 319 and 320. Ah, uh, welcome to... <laughs> yeah, they don't tell you about, like, most of the items except the very fucking end. And they kind of, this, it's like, this feels like something you should tell us earlier. 
Now, the big thing what you what you actually need to have is salvaging and uh, we're, we, we want salvaging and we want uh, rigging. Because here's the thing. If you do not have salvaging, you cannot salvage in that mech. You cannot salvage anything. This is a problem. Because if you can't salvage anything, you're getting nothing out of it. You have made a bad mech. You have to go back to the drawing board and you're going to remake your mech with real equipment. Because we are salvagers, we need to make money doing this. Uh, you can use it as a weapon. Now, they also have these recommended systems. Field hash can be open to escape through the event of mech suffers critical damage. Make a swift exit. Oh no. Crawl through the safety. Escape safety. Oh no. Critical critical explosion. <laughs> yep. We're, we're fucked and we're going to die. Uh, you also have to take this. Uh, this is very important. Uh, for some reason, you cannot move by yourself naturally. I have no idea why this is not integrated into it, but uh, the locomotion system here allows you to move. If you ever lose your locomotion system or you don't think about adding it on, you physically cannot move. Your mech has no legs. Your mech has no ability to move anywhere. On one hand, funny. It's entirely possible to find mechs that have their legs blown up and uh, they don't have their locomotion system anymore. We're going to have to fix something up. Other hand, on the other side, uh, you when it says, oh, you've got 20 scrap, you've got 18 scrap. Because you're going to need to spend two slots, two scrap, to purchase the ability to fucking move. You don't have an option here. Again, oh, you've got 20 scrap. You don't actually have 20 scrap. Oh, you've got six slot. You have 12 slots. You don't actually have 12 slots. You have 10 slots and 18 scrap to you know, buy something because you need to take locomotion. Because if you don't, you just don't get anything. Uh, you know, Mechapult. You know, thought myself, scrap has many uses in the wasteland. Wow. Does, you know, it does a lot of damage. Ooh, does that speed damage? You go six times the tech level of the scrap. Ooh, boy. Uh, you can also just fail miserably and everyone makes fun of you and you do no damage. Uh, or you can just choose a red laser. You go... uh, this is the rigging arm. Like, this is the rigging arm. Now, the interesting thing about rigging arm is it's the same thing. Uh, if you don't have a rigging arm... You can't actually pick up anything or manipulate objects in the external environment. Mechs are not equipped with arms by default. Now, remember this. Mechs are not equipped with, with arms by default. Yeah, this, this is not actually how the Hazar looks. The Hazar actually looks like this middle bit, and that's it. You have to buy the rest. Which, and even like all of them with legs, anytime you see anything with legs, that is technically a locomotion system. This locomotion system. And that's why I say like anytime you see this, like they're going to have a locomotion system in them because you don't get an option for that. And that feels like, on one hand, it feels like a weird cop out. Be like, if you if you put in the idea, if you put in the concept of not having a, a, you don't start with legs. Let me buy different legs and have them do something different. I'm putting on a I'm putting on some treads. I'm not going to fucking fall over because I'm working with treads, but I can't really go over anything too complicated. I want jumper legs. I want fucking frog legs. And I want to jump around like a fucking gibbon. Let me equip that right off the bat. Not like it's just the locomotion system. But yeah, you're going to need to buy a rigging arm just to move things. Riveting gun, generally speaking, don't know why you can't use a riveting gun to kill things, but you can't. Uh, and that's all. That's all, the, that's all the things you get right off the bat.
And I chose to take out of that because I want more cargo. But then you even see kind of like a basic upgrade to Tech 2 being like, yeah, here's a fucking auto cannon, damage 4. Like that, <laughs> damage 4, to give you an idea, uh, does almost half my health. I get hit two times by that and I'm down to 1 HP and I'm going to die. God, that scared me. Like 6 HP, blue mining laser, dead. Even like upgrading to one level, even a level up, does really change the uh, the nature of a fight. But you don't get any of these toys. Why would you? You don't get any of these things. These are for real people with money. Uh, now, these are module. Hey, you need a comms module. If you don't, you physically cannot talk to allies from their mech whilst out in the field. You can't talk to anyone if you don't install a comm module. So, inst so install a comm module. You must. If you don't, you are going to have a bad time. Uh, I, chose went, I went with zoom optics because, hey, that seems kind of fun. And I get to treat you know, any single range weapon system mount on your mech by one band. And hey, guess what? I've got a 50 cal machine gun. And all I want to do is, you know get into a eh, decent range and just start firing at you with a 50 cal fucking machine gun. Yeah, like a lot of these are like that. Like, oh, hey, the panda sneeze. Well, the hacking program allows you to hack into a mech database for computer systems and manipulate data within. Roll, roll the D20. Voice modulator, advanced reactors, safeties. A lot of these are, like, they seem like they do things, really, but they really don't. That's the weird thing. Some of them just don't do anything. Like, why do we need a voice modulator on my fucking mech? There's no reason for it, really, outside a very, like, specific thing. Why do we need concealed locker that costs three scrap at two space at TL3? It's a lot of fucking money. Unless I find it, but then, like, why am I using it? It's one of those things where, like, the... What they're trying to do sometimes is a little bit strange. And of course, home sweet home. So, uh, before we get to this, I'm going to grab something to drink real fast, so I'll be back in two seconds. Enjoy the music. <laughs> Hello, I'm back. It's me. See, I'm making a, I'm making a slow cook. I'm doing some slow cooking, and I'm uh, ma making tomato, uh, making potatoes and a, uh, and some meat in a, in, in the crock pot, and put a bunch of barbecue stuff. And, you know, put some sauce and stuff on it, and I uh, put some little bit of veggies in there. Uh, the potatoes look fucking terrible because it soaked up all the sauce. All my potatoes look like dead brown. 
took a took a bite of it. I'm like, ooh, this does taste good. I could definitely taste the, the there's a kick to it because I'll you know what I was using. I'm like, wow, this looks like <laughs> this looks terrible, but it tastes good, so that's a plus. So, ah, let's do the uh, the funniest line in the entire book. So, your union crawler is a huge and sprawling mech, effectively a walking settlement. Ooh. A Tech 1 starting Union Crawler is about the size of a small village, with a larger crawler the size of cities. Incredibly slow and vulnerable, they are able to securely house, house an entire community of people within the armored shell, including your friends and family, as well as swaths of other workers. Crawlers are communal spaces. There is no direct hierarchy of command. All resources on the crawler are shared. Everyone contributes what they can and receives what they need. Remember this line? As a salvager, you have an incredibly role, incredibly important role within the crawlers of finding a scrap within the wasteland to contribute toward the upkeep of the Union Crawler. Without this upkeep, a crawler starts to deteriorate and can begin to lose vital functions or even be destroyed. As a result, you and the other pilots have unilateral control as a group to dictate the direction of the Union Crawler in the wastelands and to use the resources that you find in the wasteland. This is one of those, like, funny lines that I'm like, I don't think you quite understand what you're saying here. Uh, effectively, we're all communal with no hierarchy. However, we get to dictate where we go. And we get to dictate how things go. Which is very funny. See, that's why I say, not all wasters are, all wasters are equal, but some wasters are more equal than others. Yeah, you have a inadvertently a lot more control than some people because you have a mech with a 50 cal machine gun and the ability to actually pay for everyone else living. You have a lot of power indirectly. And I don't think that was the that, that was the intent of um of the game of uh saying, "Hey, uh you have like of course we'll work with you." You know, Yeah, this is this is one of those things you're like, uh oh, spaghettios. How do you, how does this keep happening? Yeah, it's the salvage union has fallen. Billions billions must scavenge. So, th this is the third sheet that you will need, but don't really need it. There are a few different crawlers out there for you to for you to actually work with. Each crawler has an augment and it has a person. So, let's say for example, the augmented crawler. Not everyone on your union crawler is augmented in some way and your medical technicians are be are able to implement a variety of body modification. Hey, every pilot in the union crawler may train any pilot ability from the augment ability tree in addition to their other abilities. You choose this character type during character creation, all pilots gain an additional training point, which may be used to spend on the augment, augment ability tree. So everyone actually becomes augmented, and you have a special character. Uh, special characters are able to help you in certain ways. Hey, we are working with a you know an engineering crawler. Hey, we reduce the actual cost uh, to uh, build and upkeep this thing. <laughs> or hey. There is a, uh, you have an amazing engineer. You, you got to give him a name and motto and keepsake, of course. And they only have four HP, but don't worry, it's fine. And once per downtime, the research engineer can be have to craft a single mech chassis system or module. Yeah, this can... <laughs> yeah, um... Cracked amount of scrap to do this and follows all the normal crafting rules. You literally have a free crafter that you can just kind of use. Or hey, you have a explorer, or you have an all-terrain locomotion. Y yeah. Trading, bae. Mm -hmm. Does all of these technically ob obey the same ideas of, hey, you need more? Effectively, what you need here, if, if you're doing a mega city, you need 30 scrap, 20 scrap, uh, tw you need uh, 25, 20, uh, 15, 10, 
and uh and five five value five tech one scrap because at the end of the day again everything is a perfect con is is perfect to uh exchange one to one you have to pay the upkeep cost and scrap and that's one of the big things about you going out there you need to do that to get paid if you don't get paid we all die that's all your fault does the population do anything no they don't do anything for you. You have, like, a people who will help you, but they don't do anything. It's not like, oh, they're paying taxes to you. Or, hey, they're actually willing to help you or do something. No, they just exist. This is this entire population thing is kind of bullshit. It doesn't really do anything for you. Uh, you have no reason to give a shit about them outside important characters. Because those important characters might help you. Or they might not. Who knows? Uh... You know, during downtime, you must pay the upkeep cost. If you don't, everything starts deteriorating. You can try to upgrade it. If you upgrade it, that's more people who join you. And that means you get better shit. And that also is you're upgrading your mech, your uh, your actual crawler. And once you're cr activating your crawler, you're making more money off of it. But oh no, you failed. You can't pay the upkeep. You'll roll. You'll lose structure points. You choose a bay and it becomes damaged. Things are going wrong. Oh no. You reach zero, we're fucked. Destroyed and smashed here entirely collapsed. Then you have to roll in the destruction t you know, table. Then we're saving the Union Crawler itself. Entirely destroyed. Cannot, if you choose, you, all, all bays are damaged. Yeah, you can sacrifice the entire population and just keep the uh, the crawler though. Because remember, but you are simply more important than others. <laughs> that's that's the thing. Like you get to sacrifice everyone if you you care, because again, they don't do much for you. They're uh. Never got to watch the original. Every time I saw the guy in Manly's dressed up as now, I always thought he was 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 their version of Dark Vader because helmet mask thing. Jar is pretty much Darth Vader, mighty body, body mutilation. I wouldn't necessarily call him Darth Vader. I, but he serves a similar purpose, mostly being comical, <laughs> trying to make, trying to uh, ag agitate a Murrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can. This is what I mean. A new Tech One crawler can be built for thirty Tech One scrap. Yeah, for 30 tech one scrap, you can build a brand new crawler from nothing. Let's keep the upgrade. Yeah, it's like, oh, okay. Yeah, it's like, you. it costs a lot to upgrade everything, but yeah, you want to build a new tech one crawler, it costs 30. This mech that I have right here is technically worth 20. It's a, actually, no, it is not 20. It is 19. It is 19 to buy this. You find one good haul, you can build an entire new crawler. Uh, because they want, because the entire game is built around the crawler. Uh, now, there's a few bays. Now, the big thing is, each bay is something important. If something gets damaged, then fuck, we can't move. Or, like, if a bay gets damaged, you can't use it. But as long as it is functional, things are good. So let's say the command bay is for surveying and planning out forays. It allows you to scan the area within the campaign map and get a simple hollow map of the environment and any key points of interest. However, once per downtime, before you set out onto the wasteland, you may ask the mediator a number of questions. Ask questions. Do that. Who cares? Oh, no. There's the princeps. He, 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 a name, a model, and a keepsake, and they have 4 HP. P and they don't matter because they don't, they don't do anything. Uh, you are in the dark when it comes to conducting missions outside the immediate area. The mech bay. The mech bay is the most important thing in the game. If the mech bay dies, we're going to all die. Yeah, you know, the tech level you determine what mech chassis. Yeah, effectively, hey. As long as everything is, we need to get fixed. But if we have a too high of level things, we can't fix our shit. So we want to upgrade. We want to upgrade the crawler before we upgrade ourselves. That's pretty much the basic idea. 
Now, if you can't, you're going to have to spend salvage value to fix it. That's where things are getting complicated because it's very, very expensive. And very expensive things is what bankrupts us. You know, tech level three and repairing a damaged Colossus chassis with tech four chassis with salvage value 60. You must spend eight times tech four scrap to repair the intact condition. Yep, and amount of scrap equal to half its salvage value of tech level or higher. Now, any further use that, you know, you can, ref you can you can install, you can change anything, is pretty much you can switch out these things whenever you want. And they're not gone. You can just put them in storage for a time. If I want to, I could sub out the transport hold for a second gun, and I can have two guns now, and I can go brada brada brada, it's time to commit a hate crime against the wasters. You know, it's just like, it doesn't matter. However, if it's damaged, you can't fix anything, and if anything was in there, it's all damaged. Storage bay, all our shit gets, all our shit gets broke. Armament bay, our main ability to actually defend ourselves. If that gets broken, we're fucked. We're having a very bad time. Crafting bay, another very important bay. You need the crafting bay, because if you don't have the crafting bay, guess what happens? You can't build anything anymore. You need to fix it, and that costs time. Now, yeah, this is the uh, <laughs> this is the idea of the trading bay. Hey, each bit is worth about equal to its tech level. The basic. Everything you can just say is base one. It's very simple to buy scrap. I was hoping that like, oh, hey. Like, oh, hey, I was hoping that like, maybe, you know, having six tech one scrap isn't as worth as much as a tech six scrap. Because it's more expensive and it's more high tech stuff. No, if you just... Literally, there is no reason for you to not jackal shit from people. Because again, it's perfect exchange rates. 5 tech 1 is a tech 5 scrap. So, hey, just jackal shit from people. Oh no, there's a people. That, look at those innocent people over there in their cool mech. I'm going to kill everyone in it because now we've got, you know, we kill them and steal their shit. We can now pawn shit off and get money out of it to upgrade other things. Again, it's 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 kind of weird that you have such perfect trading amounts when it really shouldn't. I just picture Schnitzel from Chowder and on the on a mech. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh hey, you can also buy different mech chassis and things from it, which is again like, hey, you know, assume your traders have worked to find the best deal possible. The amount cannot be further bartered. Why wouldn't I be bartering things though? Hey, I've got a, I got two fucking mechs over here. These things are pretty good condition. We, we fixed them up. Being like, yeah, I'll give, you know, the total salvage value is 20, but I'll give them to you for, tw the total salvage value is 20. However, these things are fixed up. I'm going to say it's 25. Yeah. These are mine. What are you going to do about it? Fight me over it? Yeah, let's go. Let's fucking go. And then you start blasting each other. No one gets anything. And the... The rug the rugged advancement of capitalism demands that the system be a lot more uh, a lot more efficient than it actually is, because this is hyper efficient and it shouldn't be. You go know, because it's like oh hey let's roll the die. Hey five I rolled an intact module is available for trade. That's all. Uh, and there's really no reason for you to not buy things when you get them. Or, again, just steal it. Med bay, same idea. You just recover all your HP. Pilot bay. This is where you actually, uh, you, you can actually train. And this is why you also need to advance the crawler, is this is how you get better. By paying up. Because money makes the world go round. And we need more money. Money, money, money. Money! Uh, you can put all your personal equipment in the armory and hey you need you know you need all of these things you lose access to you know, to pilot equipment yeah it's technically 
These items are sourced from the wasteland by your quartermasters in a relative limited supply. You can technically just ask for equipment in the armory. As long as you have it, it, there's no money that you need to exchange for it. Yeah, it's the social hub. During downtime, each pilot may ask around the cantina for rumors. Ooh, hey, if the cantina becomes damaged, we're going to die of starvation and dehydration. Oh no. Crawler name. Now, the crawler movement's actually somewhat interesting. Because, um... Uh, yeah. Kind of the idea is uh, you want to, you're moving around the map in different areas trying to find like what's actually able to be scrapped. Uh, now, interesting to note here, they never talk about uh, really getting into fights with other people as much and scrapping their shit because inevitably that's what probably would happen is different union crawlers would come into contact with one another there would be some very basic trade but then we would open fire on one another because the value of killing a union crawler is infinitely more useful than anything else hell that that would that would be that would be my thing being like if we eat a fucking union crawler we will be able, we will eat good for a mu we'll, we'll eat good for a fucking week yeah, fuck it. Let's start fucking... It, that, they never really addressed, like, oh, all Union Crawlers get along so well. No, they fucking don't. Even They even have the idea of, like, oh, well, you're not really supposed to go back to the Union Crawler to drop off scrap and then return to the region. Why not? Well, they do that because you fuck the loop up if you do. Yeah, like, doing... Like, it's not your job. You gotta have them in the right space. That's why you... Inevitably, someone's going to have what I can really only best describe as the bitch mech. Uh, and the bitch mech's entire job is to not have any fun toys, but just have a lot of space. Okay, we, we, we have 40 scrap, effectively, in one guy's ass currently. That's all we can't get. Like, he's not, he can't contribute to a fight at all. He can't really contribute to anything. He's just, it's 40... <laughs> He's got 40 fucking, you know, space in his ass to do work around with. You know, it's like, hey, we get all our bonuses, we get all our salvages. Yeah, it's... Kind of, yeah. Again, this is another one of those, like, scale issues. Because, again, that makes it look like... You're there, like, is this a sal... Like, is this the size? It looks like, you know, like, it looks like this fucking person maybe goes up to, like, here, maybe. Like it only they they go pretty short, but I I don't know I genuinely don't know the scale of this fucking setting. Cause again, yeah, like even even here, like that's a that's a vehicle, and it looks like he's about as tall as the vehicle. I mean, like, what's the scale of the mech really? Like, very it's a little confusing. But yeah, here's the entire core mechanic. All of that bullshit, secondary to this. Just roll a d20. That's all. Every single thing you do is roll a d20. Uh, anytime you want to push a mech, for example. Hey, we're pushing a mech. All you're doing, if you push a mech, is you re-roll the die. However, what you do is you get two heat. And then you roll a d20 again. And if you roll under your heat, you're fucking dead. And everyone laughs at you because you suck. And everyone hates you. That's it. That's how you push. This is the entire thing. Heat check. You roll under it. You break something. Uh-oh. SpaghettiOs. Which, again, I roll I roll heat. I rolled an eight. Uh, module overload. Hey, my fucking module's broke. Shit, I have to fix that later. So you, you never really want to boost up heat because you can die, actually. Yep. Yeah, you've got to... 50% chance of surviving it. You have a 50% of chance of uh, SP damage equal to your current heat. Yeah, this could kill you outright, by the way. Literally anything except uh, except 20 is a possibility of death. It's great. But how do I recover heat? You're right. You have to vent heat, and it takes one hour as a long action. Oh, oh boy. 
I love wait like okay it's time for my long rest generally speaking every initiative is actually based off the group and it is we're taking you know we go then they go I go they go they it, it's kind of a popcorn initiative you go back and forth with each other blowing each other to pieces most of the time it's based off a group though so you might have a group of people you might have a group of things there so for example this is initiative roll initiative i rolled an 18 quick draw when pilot is chosen to act first then play pass it to an npc then boom 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 back and forth normally oh no I rolled a 13. That means it's a quick draw again, because 50% of the results are going to be a quick draw. Can I get a bonus for this? No, not really. Can I get a uh, benefit for it? No, not really. Oh. Can I spend two points and just not roll? Yeah. You can spend two points and not roll. How many ranges are there? Four ranges. There is close, medium, long, and far. That's it. Everything is within those ranges. Is this on a map? No. Are there free action? Oh, how, how does actions work? There's a turn action, free action, reaction. That's it. Generally speaking, short and long action, like these are mostly for like actions that you're doing for your character. Not really mech stuff. Most of this is not mech stuff. Almost everything you're going to be doing for, like, reactions, free actions, and actions are going to be either one, two, or three. They actually have to do, like, is my pilot or mech acting? Like, generally speaking, yeah. They even, they don't quite understand how to, like, oh, how do I make this interesting? You don't, really. If you attack someone, you're going to deal one damage. If we... If you if I get hit by a car, I don't take two damage. Unless you have a gun that does something different. For example, my 50 caliber machine gun, I roll, I hit, I deal two damage. All that happens. Oh no, I've rolled. I I'm dead. What do I have to do? I have to roll this. Oh no, let's roll my dice. I've taken a 20 miraculous survival. I'm perfectly fine. I'm taking core damage. Oh no, I'm damaged and inoperable. I'm fucked. Yeah, taking 11 to 19 is not good. Like, it doesn't mean necessarily mean even rolling higher is a better result. A module or system destruction is a hell of a lot better than getting core damaged. Or, you know, catastrophic damage, of course. You can do abilities to repair, but hey. And hey, you survived. Hey, you're unconscious. Hey, you fucking died. And that's the entirety of combat. That is the entirety of the actual literal game. Most of the chassis when it comes to salvage is things like this. Hey, the, we, we've got, what, what are we actually working with? How do we trade shit in? Most of the time, it's going to be damaged. You can try to patch up, repair, and fix things. All, you know, it's like, hey, we can maybe repair it and then pawn it off. But most of the time, we're going to be... Oh, I'm getting a phone call. Give me one moment. Notepad, you must not eat anything. I'm ordering a giant thing of food for you. I'm like, oh. Oh, you are. That's cool.
that's cool, mom. Like, okay. Like, you know, looking at my, looking at my fucking crock pot full of stuff. Hmm. Well, I guess tomorrow I can make it. Yeah, I guess tomorrow I can have it. I'm like, all right. Uh... So yeah, the, kind of the basic idea is that you're going to find things and you need to, at the end of the day, fix it up and then pawn it. That's the idea. You need to pawn shit. This is the difference between area salvaging, though. Area salvaging is like, hey, there is an area full of salvage and we are going there to, take, to pretty much take shit. And it's like, hey... Number is fine. Each time rolls in the area salvage, reduce the solvent, you know, reduce supply by one. When you hit zero, there's nothing else there. But hey, we got some money. It is intended to emulate salvage picking through the carcass of a mech, trying to find good shit. Yeah, uh, one of the things here that's a little bit weird is they don't really do a good job of salvaging. You're not salvaging most things. Uh, Wish this system was a little bit more dense, honestly, because it's like, oh, hey, we're picking through things and we're building, we're pawning shit off. On the other hand, it's like, oh, sorry, there's only a carcass there. Just, just see what you can find. It's not a skill check. There's nothing is skill based in these games. Everything is just random chance because it's just a D fucking 20. Salvaging a non mech. Oh, well, you can get, you just get one. You get one value. Each individual piece of scrap take up one cargo slot. This is what I mean by a vast majority of character groups are going to be... There's going to be the one guy who has the hauler mech with a bunch of things to improve his fucking capacity and nothing else. He's got a gun, he's got capacity, and you're going to throw as much shit as you can in there. And it's like, oh, well, we found this, we found this. You can take as much as you want, but it's like, oh, sorry. You know, like, we, how do we, how do we get this? Can we make a run back and come back here? No, you can't, because that's not how the game is actually made. Like, you can't do that, because the game fundamentally doesn't want it to be made that way. Yeah, it's like, hey, I want to, I want to take the mech chassis. Some of them are just, hey. It would take up all of its slot. Mecha 6 could not carry the mirror ball. Yeah, you could just take a mirror ball. The chassis of system can be scrapped per scrap action, split into individual pieces of scrap, which can be split up and carried among different mechs and pilots. When in doubt, just fucking chop it up. So, he's like, oh wow, look at all these scrap tables. Nothing. Actually. Uh. It's like, oh boy, what's Tech 5 scrap? Oh, it's polycarbonate, stealth cup, and it's nothing. It's 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 tier 5 scrap. Uh, that's really all it is. It's the thing. Oh, you want to do some area salvage? This is what you do. You roll a d20. I rolled a 6. I find two scrap. Oh, I'm going to do a, a mech uh, I'm going to do a mech salvage. I rolled an 8. Guess what? That means uh I, uh, you salvage a system or a module of choice on the mech. It has damage condition. Everything else is considered destroyed. Oh, time to time to scrap something. You break down an intact or damaged mech Cassie into into just scrap. The tech level one, salvage value three. You get three tech level one scrap. Yeah, it's the main gimmick of salvage union is scrapping, and it's like, oh boy, it's time for accounting, and it doesn't even feel like it's a big thing. It feels so secondary. Mm. This is one of the, again, one of the value, valuable things of like mounting or loading where you can just take on something. Yeah, it's like, see, look, 16 tons. What do you get? 16 tons of salvage. Like, is it? So, yeah. Get ready to be the guy who is just hauling shit. Also, again, another thing of the actual scale of this fucking game being so fucking weird. And that's it.
honest to God, that is 95, that is 99% of the game we just did there. You know, oh, well, we got to decide core features about a region. Doesn't fucking matter. How, what, what's actually there? How do we make money off? How, how much money do we get? You know, pay more tense game or upkeep is not guaranteed. Yeah, just fucking make money. The thing is, if you limit scrap, people are going to start getting desperate. And they're like, hmm, you said there's a village around here, right? Yeah, okay. We're going to go there and attack them. What are they going to fucking do? Resist? We got a 50 cal machine gun and you told us specifically they have one mech. We can open up fire on them and with all three of us, we're going to be able to fucking rip them to shreds. We scrap their shit, kill everyone who fights back, and leave because it's gonna it's worth money now. You've applied value. And that's what people are gonna do. And that's the that's kind of the unfortunate thing. It's a lot of this is like, oh boy, reaction roll tables. Oh boy, here's the encounter tables. Oh boy, here's bio titans, 39 structure points to fight a you know. Like, you, you you will not be fighting these guys until much later. Because all of them will kill you instantaneously. Because a rending bite kills every tier 1 and tier 2 mech immediately. Every single one, you die immediately. You, you die with every single tail swat. What does Mel do? Oh, well, you get some meld out of them. You, 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 if you kill a bunch of fucking nanites. Oh, wow. Look, everyone. It does HP. It does SP damage. Like, oh, I want to fight a... Oh, oh, I want to find a machine gun turret. Bang, bang, bang. Everyone's dead. Armored box wheel. Oh, oh goodness. Oh, no. It's got a fucking 30 millimeter auto cannon strapped to it. Like, most of the time, it feels like, oh, here's a bunch of cool designs, but it's like, why bother dealing with it? Like, oh, a veteran, what's a veteran going to do? A veteran's going to die immediately. Like, this is, this is the entirety of the enemy people you're going to be encountering. And it's like, all right, like, okay, you know, elite blade squad, energized blades, elite beam troop, like... There's some squads, but this is just one of the. This is just a sample adventure, really. Like, if we go by here, it's like okay, a medium goss laser retrieval team. You know, it's like okay, where's the? I mean, there's got to be some. Where, where, where are the mechs? What are we? What are we doing? We got some mechs here. Yeah, mech fighting. Not really. Don't really deal that that much mech fighting. I think you're supposed to. I think the idea is that you're supposed to build your own mechs and then have them fight. Uh, which is like, oh, that's cool. Can't throw anything too strong against them. They just die immediately. Uh, so, Salvage Union. Congratulations, we Salvage union Here's the thing with Salvage Union. You fuck, you put 16 tons back into my head. Here's the thing with Salvage Union. And I'm going to say this as I did for Quest. Quest is a game about rolling a d20 to roll a d20 for the sake of rolling a d20. That is it. Uh, there is nothing else really going on under the hood, really, outside of a very simple narrative system with the purpose of rolling a d20. Salvage Union has more stuff going on for it, but at the end of the day, the end of everything, it is roll one d20 to roll a d20, to read the result of a d20. Oh, I'm piloting a super cool, awesome mech. Roll a 1d20. Oh, well, I am doing it. Roll a 1d20. Oh, well, I am I can, uh, I, I'm I'm super cool. I got the, roll 1d20. You add no modifiers. You add no abilities. Oh, you've invested a bunch of points into something. Sorry, you get a, you can ask a question. Ta-da, good job. You did it. And it's, the system is just very underwhelming. And then it's like, oh, well, let's get into a fight with something. And it's like, all right, time to just wail on one another for a bit. Because there's like four fucking ranges of combat. And it's like combat's not the main thing. Because guess what you're going to be doing during combat? You're going to be rolling a 1d fucking 20. And saying, oh, I hit. Or, oh, I missed. Oh, I hit. It, it's just, 
just that you just and there's nothing else really going on there i mean like oh well i've got some action points and ability points I do all these cool things being like not really because you're gonna you have different energy points and you have different abilities and stuff but that shit just costs money and you are going to want to be as efficient as possible there's no reason to ever get into a fight because of perfect exchange rates you should never take a fight that you cannot win and by win, I mean you you alpha strike something you do not like, and they die immediately. There is a problem. What do we do? I rolled a 20, and it's dead. And we're, we're going to jackal hound this thing now, rip it apart, steal all its shit, haul it back to the holler, and pawn it off for scrap to make money. And it's like... Feels like there should be more here, but then I'm realized, no, that's just the entirety of Quest. Quest is not a game about doing things, it's a quest about looking like you're doing things, but not really. And it's like, here's the action points. How much care for the action point system? It's a stupid little meta currency that you have to spend to do things. Which, per session, you might be able to do one, or th one, one to three things, roughly. And that's even if you have the abilities to do things. There's a chance that you will do absolutely nothing with your action points. Absolutely nothing. Because why would you? Because everything you do is going to be 1d20 and just that. You're 1d20, consult the chart. You have finished the game. You have. I have taught you the entirety of Salvage Union. Everything else is just a chart reading 1d20. Read the result. That is everything this game is. Is it a good mech game? No, because if you, again, you remember at the beginning of this four-hour stream where we talked about what mechs are, the mechs don't really have any clear, defined feeling to them. The scale feels very different, and it's like, are these big mechs, are these small mechs, are these, like, heavy industrial mechs? But then you get these fuckers with arms and legs, but then they can't, and like, oh, sorry, you have to invest in the ability to pick up something. You have to invest in the ability to walk. It's like, oh, well... You know, I might have room, I don't actually. And then someone's going to have to pay, play the bitch. Someone is going to have to play a little bitch boy who doesn't get to have fun because what they get to do is they get to haul shit. Their mech is not a cool mech. Their mech is a 60, you know, 15 tons of, you know, fucking scrap that they get to haul back and forth. They don't get to do anything. You know, it's they are a heavy armored piece of shit that we load up things into to make money. Because they're like, oh, well, we want to play a bunch of like zippy mechs and fight people. No, that's not how the game is supposed to be played. And you shouldn't play it like that. Because if you do, you are playing the game incorrectly. That's, I think, my biggest issue with Salvage Union at the end of the day is it is very easy to play the game incorrectly. And if you do play it incorrectly, there's something interesting there. Hey, every mech you fight is now money. Every time you get an arm blown off, that's money. It's like Battletech. Battletech is not a game about... It's Battletech is a game about dying. But it, what it really is... I'll give you a secret what Battletech really is about. Battletech is a game about going bankrupt. Because you have fucking lost all your money doing repair costs so now every fight has a different has a different way of approaching things hey we can win this fight we're gonna get fucked up doing it though we are we are gonna get fucked up are we going to pay is this going to pay no let's get the fuck out of here fuck this hey that guy has a tier five fucking mech he is rolling around like he owns the goddamn place we're in a bunch of tier twos we've got the right armaments why don't we fucking ambush him we take some damage but we're gonna get a tier five mech out of it yeah take some fucking damage he's fuck he's fucked up he's on the ground get in there and fucking kill him and steal his shit because you've now put value on hey that's a tier five mech of course we want that my thing would be, make every tier of scrap more expensive than the last. You want to buy tier, a tier 2 piece of scrap? Cool, it costs 3 tier 1. Not 2 tier 1, 3 tier 1. So effectively it would be, um... How I, 
because the thing is you can really fuck with people's economy and the way that people actually view it. so it's like uh tier one is worth one tier two is technically worth three tier three is worth five tier four tier four is worth seven and tier five is worth uh i would believe it would be nine and tier six would be worth effectively like 12 technically it would be 11 but you get the idea effectively it's no longer perfect number exchanges so the way of looking at it would be like my tier one scrap is now worth one tier one scrap or i can you know it, it's not very it's not very valuable you know this isn't very valuable but my tier two scrap is suddenly worth three scrap worth something more so you are feeling more encouraged to actually invest in some of these lower ones because right now you want five you want i need five tier four things cool 20 scrap that's all you need 20 scrap and it it's like this constant cycle with this game that i'm like very caught up in because if you remove all the communist bullshit then it's just like this is a game about money with no money in it and it's all about one guy being a bitch and hauling everything. It's a game about not doing things because doing things is expensive and we can't afford to do it. If you if you want to like do things like take jobs and do corporate gigs, then yeah, you actually have something interesting there. Hey, we'll pay you in a shit ton of money. We'll pay you a shit ton of money. We'll pay you a shit ton of scrap. We just need you to do this job. Okay, we'll do it and you get salvage rights. Awesome, you get salvage rights. That's a huge deal in things like Battletech. But uh that is not salvage union. I'm my my very mixed opinions on it. Like the idea, uh not really anything else though. So don't know why it keeps going here, because I think God hates me. Log in. It's time for our favorite time of the year. Time for our favorite thing. The thing we love doing. Because I know I love doing it. Because I'm a fucking masochist. Because masochism keeps me alive. Yeah. I got log into, I got, I got to log into Facebook to log into Kickstarter. It's great. So, let's go to games. Gamma. Let's learn. Ooh. Red Nails versus Mode by Monolith. Let's explore games. We're going to do the newest games. Tabletop games. Let, let's actually do a quick look. Let's do it. Look at our saved projects. Eldritch Autonoma. Ooh, looking a little bit rough there. Unlimited Online seems to have failed. Unsurprising. Earthon succeeded. King of the Heartlands failed. A little bit painful there, but hey, it happens. Wilderfeast succeeded. Good good job. Crucible of Lorn succeeded. Cthulhu Dreamt, sci-fi horror and soundtrack succeeded. Uh, Doom Song, Lord Have Mercy. And Gun Belt, though, does appear that Gun Belt and We We Boomers failed, surprisingly. Uh, Wayfarer Guys to Aust Austera. Failed. Underground, an action movie game. Failed. And The Witch Who Survived. Succeeded. A lot of failures, unfortunately. Uh, but that, that does happen. So, let's do my favorite, my favorite time of the year. Let's learn, look, let's look at Kickstarter and feel really fucking sad. Oh, STL, baby. I love STLs. They're my favorite. Let's see. That, that looks like AI, it's not AI generated. Da, da, da. Lanschneck Ogre. Songbird, Eldritch Fantasy Adventure Game. The acclaimed. So acclaimed, I've never heard anyone talk about it. I need to click on it. I need to figure out what's going on there. I I have to learn. A 
tactical RPG that succeeded and has a box. Ooh, boy. Maria de Jesus. Thank you very much, Maria. My favorite. Maria de Jesus is my favorite uh, Kickstarter creator by a, by a long shot. Because they keep making just porno. It's great. STL. Like, again, none of these are going to be used for games. That's not the point. That's never the point of these games, of these things. They're never to be actually used. Spark RPG system. Oh. Base themed game. Oh, oh boy. Trailer Park Edition. Oh, oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy. STLs, more STLs. Like, no one's going to use this, but you're, you're using these to goon on it. You're all gooning. Don't, don't lie to me. I know you're gooning right fucking now. Right this second, you are gooning right over my th this entire thing. All of you. I know how you work. Let's see. Christian strategy board game. Golden Engines of Vapora. Get ready for the AI onslaught. Oh, oh boy. Tales of the Valiant Game Master's Guide. Motherfucker, Tales of the Valiant isn't even fucking out. <laughs> Wait, is Tales of the Valiant even out? I'm not gooning in the middle of Walmart, no pet. Spartan, I don't, don't worry. I, I can always assume that someone is gooning at all times. That's the thing you must remember. I must always remember people are gooning constantly. It's the nature of the nature of the way. Let's see. So let, let's just also to answer your question there, Solid. Uh, why is multiplication division in our? Why is there not much multiplication division? Uh, three reasons. Three very simple reasons. First edition. First reason is very simple. Uh, rapidly calculate seven divided by four. Rapidly do that. Didn't do it. Oh man, that sucks. Because we needed that number yesterday. Uh, people don't gleam on to math like that as easy. It's not like, what's 2 plus 2? 4. You know, like, what's 3 times 9? It's like, and you take a second, you know, it's 27. But then you start getting into bigger numbers than that. Generally speaking, people can reasonably go up to 7 in things. That's my usual thing. People can comprehend the number 7. Anything above, above the number 7, people start getting a little bit weirded out about. And people start kind of being like, wait, what's... And, and again, it, it, it takes a little bit more of that mental effort. Uh, two uh, is, when it comes to multiplication, is that it's very easy to hit too high. Because having five of something is easy. Five. Having two times five is now having ten of something. You've doubled the number. Having four of it, that's twenty. Ex you exponentially grow with higher multiplication, especially when you just change the number. Saying, you know, five times five is 25, five times six is 30, five times seven is 35, but if now what's six times six, that's 36. You know, that's a, that is already a big jump from 30 to 36, but then we do seven times six, and then we start doing eight times six, and then seven times seven. The, the numbers grow rapidly with multiplication rather than just it's plus two, it's plus four, it's plus six, or whatever. Uh, the third reason is very simple, and it's kind of the same thing as the point number two. Division creates a lot of uh, fractions. What's what's the half of seven? Half of seven is 3.5. Do we round up? Do we round down? What happens if we add them together? Do we round up and down before or after? There's a lot of if and or maybe but perhaps statements that start going on with division. Uh, I think division's a lot worse than multiplication. Uh, because, again, you do have... It's it's harder to comprehend things a lot easier. Dividing by half or into fourths, all right, reasonable. 
Divide this number by eight. Dividing it into eight sections and someone's going to take a second and be like, okay, wait a second, that would be this. Especially if it's like 32 divided by six or something. Or like, oh, hey, it's, you know, it's, uh, no, it would be six divided by 32. Uh, no, it would be 32 divided by six. It's like, okay, wait, like that, that number changes all of a sudden. And then you have to sit there for a second. You got to realize it. Like, okay, that would be five point this and be like 5.1. Then you wouldn't round down to five or do we round up automatically? If and or maybe, but perhaps statements are the worst thing you can ever have in a game. Uh... Who did this? John. Hello, John. I am sad and cute. What have you created, John? Dot Dungeon Remastered. Oh, it's John Battle, otherwise known as Snow. It's this... It's this lovely human being. How, how can I forget? Hello, John Battle. John Battle is a, um... He is a individual that uh, is generally annoying, genuinely annoying to just deal with. And the fact that he exists is something that I feel nothing but agony toward. I hate Dot Dungeon. It's not a game. Uh, did John Battle finally block me? John has not. Um, luckily, he... He... Uh, is a, uh, what, I'm gonna hit John with a car. In a friendly way. Wait a fucking second. I saw that name. I saw that fucking name. Charlotte. Charlotte, don't you fucking do this to me. Charlotte, don't you do this. That Charlotte Lurasky. Ha ha ha. I know Charlotte, actually. Hello, Charlotte. It's been a while. Yes, I do know her, in fact. Jon Snow, woman now. Uh, hey, he's given every single pronoun somewhere on his multiple things. Therefore, I will be referring to him as he, because his name is Jon. Uh, oh no, that's not what he goes by. Don't care. You refer to yourself as he. You're he. Uh, yeah, I know Charlotte. Uh, wanted to work with her previously, but then I realized she is one of these people. Uh, so, Warp Drive Wander, Ragtag Crew, Spacefarers, Zay... Uh, Playbooks, is this PBTA? Is this exactly what... Yep, this is exactly... Oh, we even got the booba models. We've got ass models, we've got thigh models. Man, we got everything we could possibly want. Tactical RPG adventure for seven people. This doesn't look like an RPG. I believe this is a game like Kingdom Death Monster. You are claiming to be an RPG to get those money. Spark system reference document. Hello, John Petre. Spark RPG. Whatever happened to the Spark... Whatever happened to the Spark RPG? Once more into the void, I remember that. Because Spark RP, because this one was, because this wasn't actually Jason. He said, oh, it's from the Philippines, but the guys from the Philippines can't actually get real money. Yeah, it's P it's a PBTA, it's the PBTA space game that someone thought was a different game entirely. Yeah, I remember this. I remember it, and I remember it so distinctly, I forgot about it. And spark. I mean, there's got to be something, right? Got to be something. Yeah, like arc RPG. I mean, there's got to be something, right? Why does that name? Why does that sound so familiar? Spark in a nutshell. Like, people are paying for the Spark RPGs, like, I mean, the Spark TTRPG system. 
There we go. Here's Spark. So impressive! So impressive! It had it came out in 2015. <clears throat> Why are you making, like, my thing is, like, why are you making, I'm more confused by this, it hasn't, it's just Electra, oh, let's see, Spelljammer, I just, I, I find Spelljammer to be fucking so, so fascinating, Like, Adventures in the Astral Plane. Like, this is literally, someone just fixed the Spelljammer game. And it's like, here's a bunch of stuff for Spelljammer. You know, because we love really sucking, five, you know, 5e cock. Let's see. This is the, this is the miniatures game, if I recall. Yeah, this is the miniatures game. Yeah, Tales of the Valiant isn't out then. Yeah. Hell... I guess Yeah, early both books are early 2024 get the alpha release. Ah, yes, of course, the $10 alpha release and you can now buy the game master book. The oh, fuck. So that's such a weird thing to be like, "Oh, well, here's the fucking game isn't out yet." Yeah, that's... Alright. Alright, fine. Fuck it. Fuck it, we ball. Zero Day War. Let's... No... Oh, Kabu oh Kabuto Sumo! Sumo's getting an update. Yay, I like Kabuto Sumo. I had fun with Kabuto. 5v, 5v. Wow, look, 5v and other things. 5v. Mm. <laughs> Land of Yeld. I know Land of Yeld. It's by these people. I know these people. Nick and Jake. These are, um... These are the fucking Magical Yant Land of Yeld. I fucking, uh, Jesus. What the fuck did you make? You made another game. What are you? Atarashi Games. Yeah, this is Atarashi. <laughs> These are the guys who made Tokyo Brain Pop and fucking um Yeah, these these guys made they made Tokyo Brain Pop and they also made Panty Explosion. I want everyone to remember that these people made Panty Explosion. And I always find that very funny. Uh like I know that name. I know that artwork. I know you. You can't hide from me. I know who you are. Let's see. Do we have anything else fun and exciting? 5e, 5e, Mark Borg. 5e. That's AI art. Uh. 5e. Five 5e. Five STLs. Henshin, a Sentai RPG. Oh, that's that's a Henshin expansion. Oh boy, it's it's Henshin. Oh, it's Henshin. 
I should fix my Henshin RPG though. I should I should fix my Super Sentai RPG. It's been a while since I've done. I, I I started working on it, but I just never got around to fixing it. Superhero powered by DCC. <clears throat> I, I gotta. I gotta know. Like, I have to, like. <laughs> This isn't, this isn't game design, this is just pornography. I believe we've seen, I believe we've seen these. Let's see, let's do, let's, uh, let's take a look. New and popular. There's another fucking one. There's another mech RPG. Oh boy. Oh, I remember Pray, Mo Pray No More. This one actually is, um... This is a guy from Blue Server. Probably don't need to do this, but I'm doing it anyway. Uh, let's see. Oh, no no community copies. File the House of Prosh. This is like a weird... Didn't this game come out already? I could have swore this game came out like a fucking forever ago. Oh, these are the guys who did Synthside. I do have Synthside, actually, a fun fact. I do have that in the in in the folder. Rig, a single player carved by Rune. It's Gilla, everyone. It's Gilla. DCC RPG. Like that's that's such a powered by DCC. That is a very very unique way of doing things, but all right. <laughs> if you choose a least flattering Golden era is over, by the way. Five E, five E, five E. We we will we five E is the only edition. There has never been another edition other than five E. There never will be another edition than five E. All things will be five E. Nothing existed before. Nothing existed after. Like again, you brother, you could have used any better fucking image. <laughs> Lolly Shiragane, like. Why is there a naked version? <laughs> what? What compels... What compels a man to make a... What What compels an individual to make a... From a, a, a song specifically about... <laughs> greetings from Kazakhstan. I hate women. Greetings from Kazakhstan. Uh, say no more, Kazakhstani bros. What ink games actually, and it's a weird card game. Ah, I love it. you know, <laughs> greetings from Kazakhstan. I hate women, <laughs> man. I love, I love democracy. The fact that again, the fact that they're getting paid for that, I'm like, this is like, this is this is what I love. This is, this is I need nothing else. Nothing began, nothing will end. All things will and all things were. I love society. You have anything, uh... Anything fun here? No. Not really. Red men is gay communist horror role-playing. You'll need a game is published as a Google sheet. Motherfucker, fuck you. <laughs> oh, fuck. I love itch.io. I I love itch.io so much. You have no idea. 
It's my favorite. Have you have you actually found something interesting on itch? Uh not usually. Not usually. The issue with itch usually is it's very easy to upload things. In hours fucking Let's see. Best selling titles. Uh, across the eight directions. Oh boy, it's Exalted 3rd Edition, everyone. It's time to get irrationally angry about fucking Exalted 3rd Edition again. But we love Exalted 3rd Edition, and I can never get enough. Yeah, no, I mean, like... I don't like the look of New Exalted. I don't know. It seems too flat to me. But, but I, am, I was also a fan of second edition's, like, Wanime look. I, I liked that. First edition, though, is still peak to me. That is, that is perfect. Uh, let's see what's best-selling. Warhammer role-playing. Wow, Fabula Ultima. Never would have fucking guessed. It's Fabula Ultima. 24-9. We love Fabula Ultima here. Fabula. We are Fabula Gamings. Nothing ever began. Nothing ever begins. We at All begins. All ends. Nothing matters. Every day I wake up and every day I scream. Uh, do you have anything? Um, I wish there was like a here's a new here's here's some new shit. I would like to have a here's new shit. Uh, I mean there was um. Having a fucking stroke. What's um? What's the um? Fuck. What's the game? What's the site that was uh? Big Geek Emporium. That's it. What's going on in Big Geek Emporium? Is the site still broken? Probably. Turn vector. Do not put it on screen. That's a stealth action cockvore game. I am now cursed with this knowledge. God, God bless us. Horde Wars D12 game. Yeah, this is uh, this is Big Geek Emporium. We haven't been on Ge Big Geek in a while. Because usually there's nothing very good here. It's a lot of people saying, Big Geek Emporium, it's amazing. But then it's like the same people who usually start shit. Case in, case in point. Ignore the mod makes man of your game table. They have no power. Your table, your... Yeah, they they, they uh they know what they're doing. <laughs> they, they know what they're doing. I've been meaning to actually sign up for it, but... uh. Yeah, all right. You know what? I'm going to call it there. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your night. Godspeed, good luck. I will see you all most most likely on Monday. Maybe tomorrow if I'm feeling up to it. But that is the nature of the beast. We love mech games. Ooh, my back. Ooh. Ooh. All right. I am, as they say, away. <laughs>